everybody. Stow the carry-ons. Fasten your seatbelt. Get ready for takeoff on one of yours for Friday, June 1st. It's the beginning of summer. <laughs> You're running out of those, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that one was pretty no, good. Yeah, I, I like Here you go. Good. Break my flow right off the bat like that. And, and maybe people listen to this while they're boarding a plane. It's possible. That's right. Maybe. Stow the tray tables. Uh, and did we forget anything else? Uh, your your uh, seat cushion can be used as a flotation, flotation device. device. That's right. There so we go. do any uh, o- if you if you have any flying over water and and you know anything untoward happens, there you go. You have your own life preserver. Anyway, we have a great show coming up for you today. As you've heard the voices already, Mark McDonald joining us in the fourth chair. How do you do? Good to have you here. John, of course, here on my left, and Shane across the table from him. We're ready to roll. Andrew's back from vacation running the machines, so it should all sound good. Got a great show for you coming up. We have uh, what you've been playing today in the first block. In the second block, as uh, if you looked on boards.oneup.com, you may have noticed a late post from me. We're going to talk about the summer release list, and I got called out kind of on that. I said drought. A lot of people said no. No drought at all. So uh, we're, and Shane's nodding his head. We're gonna get we're gonna get into that in the second. Uh, like a definition of drought. It's it ma- does. It's a matter of degrees. Yeah. It mm-hmm. definitely does. So we'll get into that in the second period. Then in the third period, we have uh, some game announcements and a whole slew of news organized into nice little meaty chunks, kibbles of news for easy digestion. That's right. Kibbles. Kibbles. News. News. Kibbles. Makes its own gravy. Yep, it does. <laughs> we own. Is that what kibbles do? Well, you pour water in it sometimes. Really. It's Special, special. Chuck, chuck wagon, Come, right? Yeah. yeah. Something. Woo-woo. Oh, we are Captain Irrelevant this morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, what happens when we do it in the morning, see? <laughs> okay, so last night I'm like, also I have ESPN on while I'm getting ready for this. Did anyone catch the Cavs highlights? Because LeBron James is unbelievable. Okay, dude, 29 of the last 30 points in the game to win in double overtime. Wow. He scored the last 25 points straight. It was it was ill. It was so unbelievable. That's crazy, and I can appreciate it. But I think you have the wrong three guys. Yeah, yeah like, Brian. Uh, Brian, what? who is a Cleveland fan, is incredibly excited. About I, 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 it, it was the most amazing performance I've seen since Jordan. It was it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable. So that is pretty crazy. I just couldn't keep it in because it was just so amazing. So uh, anyway, we're returning you now. Pull your pants back up. <laughs> we're returning now. And I'm not even, you know what the sad part is? I was telling Andrew just yesterday, I'm like, man, the NBA finals are going to be the most boring thing in the world yeah. regardless because I'm not interested in the teams. But when LeBron can go out there and do that, I'll, I'll sit there and go, wow. That's what I thought too, to be honest. So maybe I will. That that does make it more interesting for me. 48 maybe points in the game. Check it was, out. That's crazy. It was unbelievable performance. So uh, who wants to talk about whatever games have been playing since you guys know about the games? Shane, you have the l- longest list well, it looks like here. It's not really that long because some of these have been playing for a few weeks. Like I'm still playing Final Fantasy II, the PSP port. I'm, I'm warming up to it a little bit. I've always been really. You weren't very thrilled about it. I've been very dismissive of this game because it is pretty busted. Yeah, like, doesn't it suck at its core? At so? its core, it's still fundamentally busted, but. It, you know. <laughs> but it's less busted. It's a it's a busted. It's a piece of shit with a nice glossy no. coating, a nice well, candy coating. If, you, if, you, if you've never played it, it's, <laughs> it's the most experimental of the regular Final Fantasies, except for like eleven, but. I mean, it, it does a lot of things that none of the games ever did again. So it's, it's an interesting... And it, thank goodness, maybe? It's an interesting time capsule to go back and see what it was doing. And this is a more modernized port, and it's easier to play than the, the you know, previous version. So uh-huh. uh, we'll, we'll see how that turns out. Uh, other than that, Calling All Cars. I finally got my PS3 back from you at long last. And I, <laughs> I purchased Calling All Cars, and I really like it. But shit rocks, doesn't it? So do you, do you have it? We should play. Like, well, Welcome to a few weeks ago. Yeah, I wasn't around for well, that. Well, that's what I was going to say, though. I was going to actually bring up Calling All Cars, because I was wondering if anyone was still playing yeah, it. Because people it. tossed around words like geometry wars with calling all cars and, I and like that, yeah. well to me the thing with 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 a downloadable game like if it's going if you're going to call it a geometry wars or any downloadable game that's really going to be a classic is it stands the test of time right and people are playing right. it for a while so so like that's cool i'm glad you're, you're well, playing I mean, it you now know, it curious. came around the same time as the halo 3 beta so I think obviously people are going to be playing that but calling right. all cars i love it because it's you know very short experience in like five minutes you can have a lot of fun and it's, it's just really pick up and play and I, I can see myself coming back to this especially for the online right time and time again and it, yes i will fully play yeah it's have you played it i mean yeah yeah, yeah it's really fun yeah i like it i, I part, part of the thing i'm running into with these ps3 downloadable games and i'm 
I'm running into a little bit with Warhawk now is like I don't have a big enough PS3 friend list and my friends that I do have aren't aren't on you know whereas like Xbox Live I have a hundred and it's filled up so I can jump on and see people doing stuff but like knowing like you have this game and you're playing well, it now you had, I don't even have you on my list I don't have you on my list I think we need to coordinate and get everything we, yeah list. we do so need to get that coordinated yeah. mm-hmm. problem uh, and this weekend I'm going to be playing um, the Mortal Kombat Armageddon for Wii which just came out Looking forward to that. Well, you know, I reviewed the the previous version, the PS2 and Xbox. Versions. What'd you give it? Uh, I'd have to go back and look. I think something around a uh, five point five. Uh, but I think this Wii version might actually be better because by simplifying the controls to be gesture based, I, th- I think that might actually improve. really improve the oh, game. Are you going to play it gesture based? You're not going to break oh, out the because it uses yeah. classic it can controller. It uses classic controller, but I played that way. I like I want to see what it you know what it offers now. And there's some there's some new gameplay things I was looking at. So yeah, I, I'm. I'll so wait, how does it use the the waggle? You just waggle it around and do it sounds sp- a bit special, like special the moves. SSX blur. Hey, you can waggle both things. Let's see well, how that works. I mean, that's going to improve. A a fighting game? I think it's going to be. Did you ever play Capcom vs. Wait, wait. SNK? MK is not a fighting game. It's a fatality game. It is a fighting game. But did you ever play the uh, SNK, Capcom vs. SNK with Easy Operation that came out for GameCube where it put all the special moves on the analog nub so you could just like move the nub around and bust out special moves? That's kind of what this is like. So okay. You, you just like are busting out special moves. Right. The regular moves are on the D-pad, I think. Anyway. It still seems a little spazzy. Well, but Mortal Kombat is spazzy, and Mortal Kombat is not a technical, you know, precision-based game. I so. will say, it, it seems like it would lend itself incredibly to the fatalities, because, like, what better way, especially when you're playing well, with another person, you, to rub it in actually, than, like, bam! Well, like, if you ever played this game, it, a lot of fans are pissed off. because You kind of channeled it. Emerald there, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> Motioning and beheading that well, way. bam! Like, yeah. You might not be up to, up to, you know, par in the MK series. This series got... Yeah, this, my, this my one, newsletter got, like, got this lost. This version got rid of the, the traditional mail. fatalities, and instead had, like, a make-your-own fatalities thing, right. where you just, like, put in motion. So, yeah, for this, it makes sense like you're just moving the stick around the waggle, waggle wand to make the fatalities so we'll see about that the waggle wand uh, <laughs> the, 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 the fatalities often occur when he plays with his waggle wand game, my, the strangest thing I played in the last week was uh, when I was in Japan I only bought one game and it was Taito, Mem- Taito Legends Volume 2 Part 2 which has Rastan 3 I mean, you know I'm a huge Rastan fan. Yeah, you know yeah, that, right? yeah. Yep. And Rastan 3, I've never played... Is that different from Rastan Saga? That's two. Okay. Rastan no, 3 no, okay. is called Warrior Blade. Anyway, I never got a chance to play it ever in my entire life. Did it, it ever come out in America? I don't... It may have came out in arcades here, but it was one of those crazy machines that had two... Uh, monitors. Oh connected. yeah, yeah, like, like Ninja Warriors, like Ninja Warrior Dar- yeah. Darius. And uh, so this is my first chance to ever play it, and I've been dreaming of playing this game for you know 15 years. So it must be severely <laughs> letterboxed. It is. It's it, uh, you know. Is it two players at once? It's three players. Oh at man, once. I gotta play that with you. You've been dreaming of playing this game for shut up. Years. <laughs> I like Rastan, all right? <laughs> the first Rastan. Yeah, the second one sucks. First of all, I call it Raztan. I don't. I don't know Rastan like where you get that from, but Rastan. the first Raztan is great. Raztan. Rastan, dude. It's got great music. Oh, let's argue about how you pronounce it a little <laughs> bit more. Anyway, so the tragedy of this game is it's like an hour and a half long. I beat, I beat it. I, I, <laughs> After I all that build up? Yeah, it's an arcade game and I beat it. Because you just kept continuing. Well, that's not bad. 15 years of yeah. dreaming and he got an hour and a half. It's yeah, better than a year of dreaming in 20 seconds. He I, got think, <laughs> I think you'll appreciate it. We should play through it. Oh, I'd love to. Does okay. it have any remixes of classic uh, Rastan it tunes? Does, and the music's fantastic, as you can expect. Awesome. And to more modern stuff, uh, we, I can find talk at length about Ninja Gaiden um, Dragon Sword. Oh, awesome! We, you know, we, we played that a while ago, but now the embargoes are up. To, right? Yeah, Ryan is freaking about well, that game. And we were all really skeptical because you don't control Ryu with you know any direct means of control. You like point to where you want him to go with it's the all stylus. touch screen and yeah. one one shoulder. Well, button, all right? the bu- all the buttons do the same thing. All the face buttons, all the shoulder buttons block. That's the only thing you do with the, besides stylus. So you like you're pointing where to go with the stylus you're attacking enemies with the stylus you're you're double tapping to to jump and then you can like double jump by double tapping twice you can throw shurikens by like pointing at enemies so you think there's no way this is going to work mm-hmm. but strangely enough it does it really it feels responsive it's fast so is this sort of like ninja gaiden crossed with diablo <laughs> it's you know, weirdly, it's kind of like Ninja Gaiden crossed with Resident Evil because of the presentation. Cause, yeah. Because the presentation, it's pre-rendered backgrounds and, like, kind of weird camera angles. Like, you'll, you'll move forward, suddenly you'll be, like, zoomed way in. and Or there are parts where it's, like, side-scrolling, even. Um, but, no, it, it weirdly feels like Ninja Gaiden. Like, I don't know how they managed to do it. But even though you're just, like, slashing, like, you know, you do horizontal slashes, vertical slashes. If you're blocking and you rub Ryu really fast, then he, like, charges up and does, like, a special move. 
you have these. Uh, How many straight lines is he going to give us in this one segment? <laughs> I think we're being very reserved. I know. I mean, I'm, I like, I'm not yeah. going to jump on that one. But but I think it's cool because usually, like, the touch controls are, like, the opposite of precision, right? right? It's like you either get precision or you get, like, full DS functionality. But it sounds like from what you're saying and from what Ryan's just talked about for oh, right, hours. Ryan, like, orgasm yeah. all over this. But, it, like, it has the, like, the the precision of like ninja guide and yeah, controls but does. also makes use of all the touch stuff it's pretty surprising how well it, it really implements the touch panel it really makes me think like i would love to see tecmo make a wii game like a ninja guide and wii game because if they can do it with touchscreen maybe they can do it because that's the problem everyone has with wii controls is right. like if you put in the wii controls like we were talking about with mortal Kombat, it's it's no longer precise right but if you can if somebody could do it That'd be awesome. It'd be incredible. Well, you know, we hung out with Itagaki a bunch, and we've asked him about if he's going to make a Wii game, and he's definitely interested in Wii because it's so successful, but I don't think it's something he's going to be doing right now. Um, and, you know, we actually filmed a lot of stuff. Hopefully, it'll end up on the one-up show at some point with him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really entertaining. But, yeah, this is by far one of my most, you know, like, anticipated DS games because it's, it's a real game. We couldn't get over how much of a real game it is. Like, you know, we play so many non-games or games that, you know, just, like, use a little bit of functionality. But this thing, from the ground up, like, a serious, real action game, a hardcore game. Full-blown action game on the DS. Full-blown on the DS. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Which you just don't get. You don't get that very often. So, yeah, that's me. Yeah. What, do you, what do you kids play? John, you've been uh, super high on a little driving game that wasn't Forza. Oh, I know. I had two driving games at once. And, yeah. you, you like dirt more than Forza? Maybe. Oh, <laughs> hold on. I think let, let's enunciate that a little louder. Maybe. Maybe. I need to play it a little more. But you're a big rally fan, though, right? I like rally, but it's it's more than rally because it has all these other modes that I can not remember the name of that have the word rally in them. Rally raid. Rally raid. Rally cross. But I can't I can't remember which one's which. But there's, because um, I mean, it's traditional rally is point to point down right. the narrow road, and it does that very well. But it also has like packs of eight and ten races in trucks or buggies or all kinds of things. It's got a lot of modes, and it's kind of what I thought. Um, it's what I would have expected Evolution to do. Like if it, when when like if a game like Motorstorm had been announced differently, where you know the team that did WRC are working on a game for PS3 and it's going to be you know in that vein. Dirt is actually what I would have expected them to have come up with, where it's like multidiscipline. It looks really stunning. It's like you know, there's a Does lot of look really physics. Good. I mean, it's it's. I, I have heard that you can't go off the road at all. Is that true? Like, you're, um, you're not very on far. The... Yeah, I mean, it's it's you know, I mean, it's that, either. I think that's kind of the appeal of Motorstorm is that you're flying off the road all the time. And... Yeah, but I mean, it's I mean, it's contained, but just in a in a tighter way. So, um, but there are there's a there's a lot of different um, courses and tracks. Um, the stuff where. Um, the point to point stuff I mean you are really funneled down a tunnel but that's kind of the nature of the, the racing but I mean it looks really stunning and the controls are really good and it's got like I don't know how many different events in it it's got you know there's like a hundred or something wow. in the pyramid that you work your way through and a big online mode and I mean graphically I mean I think it's in terms of how impressive it is particularly on 360 I think it's up there with, with Gears of War in terms of like Jesus, that looks amazing. Hmm. I think things he's doing with the lighting and the way that the, it's the the dirt on the cars is working and um, reflections and everything on it, and the, it has um, uh, like it looks like it has procedural damage to the way the new Need for Speed has as well. So like it's not just like things crumpling, like bits fall off and gradually hang off. And when they came and demoed it, they were really really happy with how far they'd come with the damage system. That was yeah. a big thing to them. I think a lot of rally games in the past, uh, people have been really put off because the discipline of it was too just, eh. and like because it's not a sport that people really follow here except people that stay up until three in the morning to watch it on the speed channel <laughs> right so it's like oh it's not very fun it's not really against other people so what they've done is they've they've left that in there but they've 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 added to it with stuff that people will respond to really well and as a demo what the three particularly what the 360 can do i think it's it's really impressive it's i mean it looks a lot like motor storm so i think a ps3 owner will see it and be like okay i've already seen something like this it's got that sort of the hdr lighting look where everything has a slightly brown sort of more ambient lit tint to it but the frame rate's fantastic and it's like incredibly fast and it's pretty hard hmm. so it's accessible as far as not being intimidating because it's rally but it's hard so that might put you off of it well it has like i think four or five different skill modes and the top mode is like this crazy simulation mode which people that used to play colin mccray really hardcore will like but it has um, a mode called clubman which is one step above the real sort of pleb mode right which is fine i mean you can slide around corners cool. and you know you can roll the car and it's got full damage and this is technically colin mccray still right isn't it they yeah. dropped the colin mccray for america oh, okay. they're calling it colin mccray overseas but here it's just called 
called Dirt. It's called Dirt, and it's... Um, I can never remember the guy's name. I always get it wrong. Tony Pastrami? No. <laughs> I'm going to guess that's not his last name. <laughs> Pastra- no, it's Pastrani. He used to be a... Um, uh, a motocross rider, and now he does... Jeremy Pastrana? I can't remember his name. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> I could live without him hosting the game, frankly. Like, right. this is... Hi, welcome to Dirt! Yeah, <laughs> bye! Hey. Sunday, uh, Sunday, Sunday! Oh, it's not even that. It's just this sort of very forced, like... You know, the game is perfectly competent without having to add any personality to it. You know? Okay. But um, I've been playing that. I've been playing a lot of Forza. I need to play a lot more Forza. I've, uh, I've just been tinkering around with just a couple of cars and just taking those through. You need to. I need to, yeah. <laughs> Um, it's really fucking unfriendly when it comes to achievements. How so? Oh, you have to be, like, a god to get any achievement. You could play that oh. game for years and never get an achievement. Wow. Because you have to get... Well, that's a bit extreme. You have to get... I mean, you could you could play it a certain way and never get an achievement. It, is, it would be entirely possible, I think, to play that game indefinitely and never so get an achievement. when we had this argument, it's the difference between the carrot and the stick. Yeah. It's it's definitely stick based achievement. Where it's like you have to be like they God-like. push you to achieve all goals. So you have to get gold really on everything on in each mode oh, see, in order to do it. Uh-huh. So if you're just plugging through and just unlocking modes, you can go all the way. Th- it's a bit like Burnout Revenge was on 360, where you could feasibly play that all the way through to the end and maybe get one or two achievements. But you can progress through the game without getting first in every race, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You yeah def- I, I hate racing games where it's from the get-go. It's like, oh, you got to place first in every race. It's actually, the, the op- I mean, Dirt, on the other hand, is you get an achievement for everything. <laughs> like, oh, you press start. Well done. Get an achievement. <laughs> oh, like you went around the first bend. Get an achievement. And they're all like five, ten-point achievements, but there's zillions of them. Right. But it, it does actually make a difference. I mean, that's, you know, that's the whole carrot-type achievement stuff where, you know, it, it you, you're clocking points the whole time. Right. But Forza is pretty brutal. I've been playing those two, and then I've been I, I've traveled a little bit, and I've been playing Pokemon. So, <laughs> a lot of people battle. are playing Pokemon. Like Chimchar like, evolved. How what level? Oh, he's only like a he's only like an eighteen or an eighteen. I'll fight you. I'm, I'm he's now you, a uh, what the, was it, a Monferno. I hate Monferno. Which is a monkey with its tail on yeah, fire I know for some it. reason. I know, you guys, <laughs> I know all about Monferno. All right? What were you guys in 1998, you know, when, when I was playing Dude, Pokemon? Get back in it. Like, <laughs> Pokemon is where you made your millions, Mark McDonald. We know, we know this. Yeah, you've forsaken your past. And this is the most refined, best Pokemon. I'm still playing Pokemon, too. I tried. I tried. I played the import a little bit. Maybe I, you should play it in English. And I'll, maybe I'll give it a try if I have time. It's I don't excellent. know if I'll have time. The excellent. scintillating dialogue will hold him pinned to the chair. Oh, my God. Let's get to the next town. It's not. I, I mean, it does some some weird stuff like you know it'll tell you that a move you made was really ineffective when you just knocked something out and you know it still does the weird quirky things like that what the battles are so slow it's because the ai is like so stat attack based you can put the ds down and the battle like concludes you can come back later well you have to keep pressing a though (laughs) no you just just touch the touch panel once in a while like it's all like (laughs) it's seriously it's a very passive experience (laughs) oh great it's a game that i can put down i I know i know that's the guy who like splits his TV down the exactly. middle and watches no, no, while playing? Actively, play I'm <laughs> actively doing both Mark, at the you same can play, time. You could play like Blue Dragon, Pokemon, and another game all the same. All <laughs> the same time. Dragon Quest Eight. Seriously, it's another game. You, you could yeah. do that. You'll be it, making yeah. a sandwich. Meanwhile, yeah. when I'm be like sandwich <laughs> football. But like everyone on EGM, I like is Jen playing it? Jen's too? playing it. Greg Ford's playing it. What the? F- Every- what the hell? It's Pokemon, dude. It's ubiquitous. It's going to sell like eight million copies. Yeah, I think it already has. I play it in little 15, 20 minute. I mean, I, I've been getting the ferry to work three days a week, and it, it's fine for filling up a yeah, 20 you can make, minute ferry ride. You don't ride. really need your brain for leveling up your Pokemons. It's great. It's really rewarding like that. Put that, really, <laughs> put that on the box. You don't really need your brain to need play this game. Need your brain? Take brain training. Don't need your brain. There's Pokemon. And it's a game that I want to get, and I'm probably going to pick it up this weekend, I went after, and particularly after the review went up, and that's Crush. Crush is awesome, but I just remembered I got the best game maybe of all time yesterday. What's that? Planet Puzzle League. It's quite seriously. Oh, oh yeah. Hell? It, it comes out on Tuesday. We got early copies. Have you messed around with it? Yeah, I played, I played a little bit because I want to try the touch, the touch mode. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do because, you know, I'm an old school fan. Shu and I, we were very serious players of this game. And th- this this adds a touch panel play, which is the first time the series ever had that. And it's better. You, you, have yeah. more, you have more speed, more you know agility. So if you're a, a player, I'd say don't even try playing traditionally. Teach yourself this new way. Yeah, because, I mean, because well, as somebody who is not really a hardcore player at all, to me it just made 
so much more intuitive, easy sense than the old way of switching pieces yeah. around like that. It was just like, I oh, I grabbed really interesting piece. With this one, the way that to make it more mainstream, they, they took any kind of franchising oh, out oh, yeah. of it. It's it, like it took completely everything raw, out, right? And, and it's touch generations. It's very like adult packaging and like this is for like professional adults. Yeah, like, it's like Luminous in the background yeah. too. It's all like weird, you know, symmetrical patterns. It has stuff. lots of create options. It has like a daily training mode, which is kind of like yeah. a brain age where like it gives you specific challenges. You can only do it once a day. And the online stuff fantastic it has one cart multiplayer it's you it's, can take movies of, of stuff and send them to people please buy this game yeah it's it's pretty impressive uh it came out so quietly though i mean I know, it's so suddenly and quietly it's fanta- kind of bizarre fantastic title yeah anyway mark what are you playing um i've been playing a bunch of stuff uh some stuff for review <coughs> for any, any, any shadow run any of that uh, i haven't gotten a chance to i know yet. that's your no. kind of game so oh yeah I'm, curious. I'm big time into shadow run you know I the big troll doll collection you know, actually, uh, up I, on, in the back of my car. You know, it's funny. I, I did play a, a pretty long Shadowrun campaign back in college. Yeah, um, well, and, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't give a crap now because it's a shooter. Well, it's too. It's a, it's a Counter Strike style shooter, which means it's, there's you know a lot of depth to it, the team play, a lot of you know like. You really have to train on this thing, and it's not bad. Elves, play. as sketched on the back of my Trapper Keeper. Yeah, I shouldn't. I mean, I'll, I'll dog it for its art direction. I shouldn't dog it on its gameplay too much because I really haven't tried it too much because of monumentally bad timing. Of course, I've been playing, you know, the Halo 3 beta like everybody else and don't really care to play another first person shooter on my 360 right now. Um,. From what I've heard from people who have been playing it, I mean, what I what little I played of the beta, it sounds like it has a lot of crazy, some kind of cool ideas, but I don't know that it's going to be balanced. I mean, once you start talking about resurrecting people and healing people and teleporting, these are all cool ideas, but a lot of times the reason people don't throw these ideas into first-person shooters is because they're, they're impossible to really balance. You'll be surprised. Really? You will be surprised. How can you How can you even say that now? Because it's, it's it hasn't even been out long Because I played it a tell. bunch, and I also played it a fair amount while I was in beta, and it, it that's the one thing it does do is it works. It's just really complex. Somehow they did manage to actually balance a very, very complex set of very Variables, both with like magic and tech and racial abilities, I think you'll be. I think, I think that's the biggest problem to it is they got the balance right, but there's too much to fiddle with. There's uh-huh. too many options. Well, it's but, too but overwhelming. At the same time, there's too few options in terms of like game types and maps. And well, the maps problem is definitely going to well, be. Well, game types, like I've heard, that there's only two game types. There's not even like a regular death match. There's team death match and capture the flag. Because of the fact that it's so very team oriented, such yes. a team oriented game. Yeah, yeah. The regular deathmatch would be next to pointless in the game. Right. So people who like to play competitive online FPS is like Counter Strike will dig this, but I think the yes. average person would be like, "Wow, this doesn't have the things I expected in it." And that is true. Like most people just want to play like Halo, just want to play Slayer. Like they just want to play Team Slayer. And even if they don't want to play Slayer, the team modes that Halo Three Beta is using and, and that Halo Two used are very quick to pick up, very easy to get into. Your team doesn't it requires some coordination, but you don't have to have like an uber coordinated team. Whereas right. in Shadowrun, you really have to have you know everybody has a role and the people have to play their roles to be effective as a team which can make for a really exciting game i just i does. don't really care to play it until after halo 3 is well, done you know you've been playing some more esoteric 360 stuff right? yeah i've been playing uh, like overlord you guys apparently had heard about it. i hadn't really heard about it until greg handed it to me for uh for review but uh so it's it, which is basically this. It's this 360 game, and uh, and Garnett described it the same way that that I would describe it is uh, is Pikmin meets uh, Dungeon Keeper. Um, and it, it basically you're this this evil guy, and uh, you have instead of Pikmin, you have these little uh, demons that look a lot like the demons in the Horde. <laughs> Another great classic starring Kirk Cameron. Uh, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, Among and, others, and there's the red ones that are immune to fire. There's uh, there's the brown ones which are offensive. I mean, it's it's a lot like Pikmin in a lot of ways. I'm having like a little trouble with aspects of the interface though. Like I didn't really appreciate how uh, really. Uh, polished Pikmin's and easy Pikmin's interface is until like playing this game. I haven't, this is the first non Pikmin Pikmin type game I've ever played. Do you have played. an avatar who walks around the levels like you do? Omar? Yeah, you're this big evil guy and you can attack stuff. And uh, do you have like a circle that you expand to pick things up? And, no, you don't. No? You don't. That you just have that, a. That was kind of the secret of Pikmin. Like right. that little circle interface worked. Well, and Pikmin had yeah, Pikmin had a lot of of different commands and uh, and Overlord replicates them in different ways. But Pikmin, it was just very easy. You picked it up immediately. Okay. So Separate my Pikmin. Okay, get this group. Send them there. Get this group. Send them there. And the ways that you attack things in Pikmin, it was easy to move them around.
around the back to call them back, etc. Um, this game, it's it's uh, obviously the, the the graphics are actually pretty pretty damn nice. Yeah, it's a pretty it's a pretty good looking game. But uh, when you get into like a boss fight or something like that, the interface w- whenever the, the pressure is really on, the interface breaks down a little bit. Where it's like, okay, I call my guys back. Do they hear me? Are they coming back? Are they still set out over here or not? Uh, there's some other cool aspects to it though. You have like a big evil tower that you're building up. It has a, a good a uh, sense of humor mostly um I tell you what, from watching Sharky play this game, I'm like actually really up to play it. So, I mean, I, I, one of the things that I thought was really cool is like watch, like sending out your minions into the town and watching them raise hell is right. friggin' hilarious. Well, it's like a million things going on. Like there's junk everywhere. And they pick up all the crap and turn yeah. it into like armor and weapons and stuff. Right. Like they run into like, he goes into this uh, uh, inn, I guess. And, mm-hmm. and as they're raising hell through the inn, they're like taking the pots and pans and putting them on his helmets and shields. And That's <laughs> a cool thing when they beat an enemy if it's like a sheep or whatever it is or these chefs they take a hat or an item from them and wear them That's so funny. you can tell like w- where they've been. Enemies that include sheep and chefs. Oh it's, <laughs> yes. It's, it, dude it's so off the wall. The little guys they pick up beers they piss all over the place after they drink a beer like it, 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 it it's kind of fun in that chaotic way. Charming. It is. It, 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 I think it really is and really goofball it's way. Um, it, well Codemasters is publishing it. I don't know who developed it. Uh, I think it's British. Some it's very British. It's definitely British. Yeah, like but, a Kuju or someone like that. I don't think it's Kuju. Um, but uh, also in the 360, I played a little bit of uh, Project Silphid, oh, which yeah. is kind of interesting because it really reminds me of being in college and playing Wing Commander, which Whoa. is which is strange since like Silphid is this really long running. Um, Silphid know, has the craziest history. Yeah, it's a shooter series by Game Arts, and it's yeah. it started on Silphid like an on rails shooter at one point. It's, it's been yeah, it was originally it was at one point. two D side scrolling shooter for Japanese PCs a long long time ago. And it was well, I played it first on the Apple two G S. Yeah, it came there. Yeah. yeah, and then after that, there was a Sega CD version, which was an on rails three D poly- right? polygonal yeah. shooter that was very beautiful, but not so hot in the gameplay. Right. And then there was a PS two shooter by Treasure, right? Three D shooter by Treasure. Yeah, that was not that great. Right. Also, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. And then now we have this uh, Wing Commander yeah, style. So it's it, I, nice I, and it's it's cool to play that type of game. I don't know why that type of game, Colony Wars, why that type of game completely disappeared. I mean, Wing Commander was so popular, and uh, like we, we were just lamenting the loss of the X Wing and Tie Fighter franchise yeah. last week. Well, yeah. it, in parts of it, you know, I have uh, like fond memories of like matching uh, speed with the ship and gaining on it and doing that kind of stuff. It has its super anime influenced for better and for worse like the story and the cutscenes are all these like ridiculous anime cliches um but the uh but the missile you know when you get into combat the chaos and the missile trails it's like robotech you know come to life it looks Shit really goes pretty crazy. right yeah it does i mean even last year at tgs it looked really pretty right even when you have no idea what you're doing like it looks cool like the, the controls are incredibly complicated it Ugh. basically takes like the controls of a wing commander game and all the stuff you could do there including you know quick 180s and uh different ways of locking on your targets different radars all that kind of stuff and puts it all on the controller wow. so you can like one move i think is clicking in one of the thumbsticks and hitting a bumper at the same time that's the, like how you match speed with something Ugh. there's a lot to it yeah there's a lot to it but if you're if you're into that kind of game i mean it's definitely not going to get the casual like oh it's a space game things blow up guys but if you're like man I, where's wing commander 5 you know then then yeah you're well, you go. Well, it's kind of a strange product i mean it was square enix's first xbox yeah, why? Game. And um, they're not publishing it here. Uh, Microsoft is. And yeah. they're publishing it at a value price, thirty nine ninety nine. dollars Right. So, I, mean, right. I, I think for what it is, that's a good idea to, to lower the price. Because, you, know, you know, it's not a huge game. Right. It's it, it's definitely a niche. Yeah. It's definitely a niche title. But it's it's super, like, reflex and skills and, and, uh, and you know, deep controls. But uh, so it's for a little, a little segment of the audience. Um, unlike Halo 3, which I think you guys have probably talked about uh, to death, but I that's takes up most of my time right now. And then now there's the custom games um, things, which people kind of stumbled into. 
Um, so, uh, you know, this thing's like sword and pistol and wraith. None of it's supposed to be in there. None of it's, you know, balanced. None of it's We have that in the news section, but, too. So if you want to, like, expound yeah. on that, you're going to have plenty of opportunity. Oh, okay. Yeah, great. So I've uh, been playing a ton of Halo 3 and then a little uh, Warhawk also. I got a chance to play. And, uh, and you know, I haven't found, like, a good server yet. I like that you can, like, set your favorite servers and stuff like that. I, I hear it's, I really it's crashing server. a lot, though. People, are, like, know that it crashes and just yeah, get used to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. it's a beta, yeah. so. Um, but I, do, I really don't like the levels that are uh, very much where, where you're mostly in a Warhawk. I don't like, I hate the ones where you're all in a Warhawk. I really like the ones where there's a nice balance between the number of guys in tanks and jeeps. But the levels in that game are crazy like they they really like they didn't really play it safe at all there's one called uh, archipelago that's just nuts it's like these floating islands in the sky there's another that's like the top of this uh of this giant city they're all like really unique and and, and pretty cool um i don't know if that's gonna work out in the in the play balancing but they definitely like took some risks in their, Why don't you in their like level the, design uh, the old warhawk one well, i still haven't mastered like how you fly the warhawk and i everybody else apparently has <laughs> so, so like like zooming around yeah, like <laughs> stopping I get a in a warhawk and i i immediately i i always for some reason hit the wrong you can either elevate or go down, and I, I, I'm going down into the ground for a couple seconds, and I think they see that. Like, they're like birds of prey above, and they're like, okay, that guy doesn't Noob. know what the fuck he's doing. <laughs> Boom, and I, I'm dead in like five seconds, and then they're doing cartwheels and you know barrel rolls after they blow me it's up. like the Blue Angels in formation. Yeah. yeah. It's like I can hold my own in a tank or on the ground or all that stuff, but I haven't gotten down the rights to controls because I can't be in the sky for more than 30 seconds without getting my ass blown up. I'm so, going to restrainedly only say, by the way, the name of the game does happen to be Warhawk. Well, you know, I, that's that's not to say that the that it uh, is not the best part of the game. I just don't understand. It's definitely the not heat. the pick up and play part of the game. It's definitely not the easiest pick up and Hopefully play. Hopefully, there'll part be a really good game, tutorial in the actual product. <laughs> well, and and actually, th- there is in most of the rest of the beta because there's a lot to it as well. It's like anytime you can turn this on or off, but anytime you pick up a weapon, it says, "Here's how to equip that weapon. Here's how to use it." It's like a little paragraph. Actually, I've gotten killed a lot just sitting there reading it. <laughs> But um, that at least is really helpful. There definitely needs to be a like flight school yeah. <laughs> section of the game. That's a good idea. Yeah. Are you? Are you? Did you get the open beta? Yeah, I have the open beta. I haven't gotten it installed yet because I've been so busy with other yeah, stuff. I'll too. probably look into it this weekend. I'm probably on the second or third tier. Mine still hasn't shown up. This <laughs> any, any day now. Wait, wait, wait. Are so you, you sure get the, you get the email because you don't. After that, it goes straight to your PS3. Is how it communicates. Right. To I checked you. my PS3 and it was not on the store yet. Last okay. Night, yeah, so. I said because yeah. I I, didn't, I never got an email or anything. I just you, went it on asked the store. You to sign up and then it, there was no confirmation that right. they got your registration or what to do or anything and then it's just like it just shows yeah. up when, when you log in please get on everybody yeah. and anybody who's listening get on because there needs to be more people so there's more servers so that there's more choice um and also one other just little thing um use a voice get a goddamn bluetooth headset please because it you lose so much when people well, aren't talking. I think when the game comes out, you know, the, the box copy is going to come with the headset. I think that's really good, and hopefully people yeah. will buy that, actually. Yeah, 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 I hope so, too. Yeah, that would be a good idea. So, that's it? For you, what you've been that's playing? That's it for me, yeah, Garnett. What I, I only have one game that I've really been playing because it's been occupying so much of my time getting ready for the big preview we put up, which was the uh, 80s rock encore of Guitar Hero. And Did you ever master Play With Me? Oh my god! Um, you remember that the extreme track that was in Bill and Ted's? Uh, this based on Flight of the Bumblebee. Whoa. Oh really? Yeah. That's on, hard. It's insane. How, hard is, how many notes does that have? You, know what they need? Um, you remember Sting of the Bumblebee, the Manowar version oh, of Flight oh, of the Bumblebee? Oh, when he played it, played it on the piccolo bass. Oh man! Oh, yes, John knows Manowar. <laughs> Dude, I'll, I'll never forget that. Oh my god! That Manowar. needs to be that needs to be downloadable. Do you remember downloadable what track? was the, what was the Manowar song we did a karaoke in Tokyo? Oh was god, it? Kings of Metal. Kings of Metal. Kings of Metal. We yes. rocked Kings and of Metal. Remember Blow your speakers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, we, we yeah, sidetracked yeah. your your eighties. So. Sorry, man of war edition. So like guitar my hero. Just fell off. Like no. re- remove Actually, your that was, garments. Remove your garments. Yeah, that's pleasure slave. <laughs> that's pleasure slave. That's a good yes. idea. That's not really a sidetrack because that's what's playing the game is like. I mean, we hung out Friday night and Saturday and played the hell out of it, and that's exactly what it's like. I is mean, there any man of war in it? No, there's not. Oh. And I guess that's gonna kind of be the thing. There's gonna be thirty songs in the final game, and we're at a point now with guitar hero 
because you know Guitar Hero, that there's no way it couldn't be a disappointment. I mean, you can't do the 80s in 30 songs, no. especially not when you're Maybe trying to do, do all Hero of the 80s, metal. which they, they would be should, way better. They should you know subdivide what? the pop, the rock, the metal. Yeah. I mean, because people want all of that. Oh, trust yeah. me, they're going to cut it really fine. Yeah. I mean, they're going to put out as many of those as they possibly can, please, I'm sure. Please publish more Guitar yeah. Heroes, Activision. Come on. It's going to be like Guitar Hero Metal 1982. You know, <laughs> they're, they're going to really cut it fine. Like March 1982 Metal. <laughs> well, they're not going to do that until they get you to buy Guitar Hero 3. I mean, that's obviously going to start to become a problem with this series because with Guitar Hero 2, I don't, who knows, you know, contractually, how much longer can they keep using the harmonics engine? Because this is still Guitar Hero 2's engine with harmonics uh, game engine underneath it. We know that they don't have that for Guitar Hero if 3. the videos that came out of Guitar Hero 3 are an indication, eh, it's pretty similar. Yeah, I mean, well, it's very similar, but there was some talk. I mean, that was so that was on the IGN preview. IGN got the exclusive first hands on with Gar- Guitar Hero 3. And one of the things they brought up was that the timing was really off. They were having a little trouble with it. That's kind of a bad sign. I mean, harmonics is the master of that. They did amplitude, they did frequency, they know exactly how to make those but, kind of games. You know, I got, how hard can it that's exactly say. what I was going to say. <laughs> like, come on. How hard How can long it ago be? Did, um, did Simon come out with that little plastic yeah, um, me, game? Well, and <laughs> guitar Freaks. Konami's Guitar Freaks is well, is well over a decade old. Which you have to th- I was thinking about that earlier. Like, somebody, I hope somebody got fired at Konami who well, didn't bring that game over. I, I, know, I know somebody was booing when they when Guitar Hero won the Innovation Award at the Dice Wars. It's like, yeah, real innovative, right. guys. Right. I mean, right. they, they, per- they perfected it, but yeah, it wasn't a new idea. So the 80s is a blast. The metal songs are absolutely the most fun. And especially like the sunset strip scene sort of you know skid row and that kind of stuff all those kind of things are the best skid row tra- it's, oh it's 18, 18 in life. life right 18 in life which is it's kind of you know no you know, I think that's the right one kind of raise your lighter kind of stuff but it's fun especially because it has the runs at the end the perfect part about metal is that you have like the crunchy chord part which will like let you build your meter back up and then when you get to the crazy stuff like play with me you can you can struggle through it and not hit end of song and have to start over all the time mm-hmm. so then you can go to practice mode and be practicing and not be frustrated because oh I can't can't finish the song. You're actually practicing to get better at it, and you can go back and play it and get to the end oh, again. Cool. Are they releasing any new hardware, any new guitars to go along with the, the 80s? They should release one of those heart-shaped ones with the two oh, <laughs> Steve oh, Vines oh coming God. out. Or at least a double, like yeah. a bass and a thing in one. Well, maybe like some, one like, on, like, license some BC Rich stuff, like the Bitch and, and those things, that stuff like the, uh, you know, the real aggressive-looking metal. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that yeah. Would be cool. for, for, for metal. Hell, yeah. They do, I think, have a couple of new guitar models in the game, like they have a is that the Vanguard? Is that what that was called that I was showing you? It's like a Kramer, right? Like a Kramer Vanguard. Yeah, Kramer's in. They're, they're in um, Rock Band as well, right? Didn't they announce that? So, so it has some cool looking. I think the most fun part about it is playing the metal songs. And so when you play the other song, that's like the MTV stuff. It's kind of like, eh. You so know, I mean, they're still yeah. fun, but. I don't know. You Aren't know, like, there a lot of synthesizer-y songs? Like, isn't Iran in there? Iran is in there. So it's interesting. Iran is one of two, in the 14 songs that they've announced so far, it's one of two songs that are actually master tracks. A real McCoy with uh, you oh. know, a flock of seagulls. The other one is is I Want to Rock from Twisted Sister. Nice. <laughs> I, I can't imagine that being terribly satisfying. It is really, really satisfying. Oh, it is? Yeah, <laughs> it is isn't it just, like, shockingly repetitive? It is shocking. <laughs> but you know what? The metal songs that are like that are good. Some of the more difficult chord-changing ones, like, they do a lot of chord changes ones like the uh like nothing but a good time is is takes a lot to get your fingers around because it's all the signature riff is all in chords and you're like you know two buttons spread by one and then four buttons and then down to the green and then back up to the orange and more chords like andrew even he was like dude this is really frustrating who, who knew cc deville's yeah. shitty guitar playing would turn into uh, <laughs> poison <something> complicated <laughs> yeah andrew was joking he's like dude i know how to play this song it's easier to play on a real guitar <laughs> 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 which is uh that's not really that's not really the way it's supposed to be, is it? <laughs> I don't know. We should turn it up to expert and see what it's like. Anyway, so more to look forward to on that and then uh Rock Band and Guitar Hero Three. I mean, how long is this series gonna go? How far can we go with music games? Forever. Yeah. As long as there's music. I'm looking forward to um It's gotta get to like a point. what they might I'm just thinking about what they could do with the pedals, you know, everyone's speculating there's yeah. gonna be pedals to plug in. You start thinking about some like the Steve Vai shit where you need to use like a wah wah pedal to make the guitar talk and stuff like that. Well what about what about like bringing over like a or an equivalent of like drum mania and having where like in with guitar freaks and drum mania you could actually play both at the same you know, there's time. This game could be rock, band. rock band. Right, yeah. <laughs> but but that allows five different But is it actually coming with a plastic drum? 
um, oh, that's eight that. ninety dollars. Yeah, like if you, you can go on EB now, you can add up oh, for the two hundred dollars. How much would it cost me to buy band. everything for the band? It's more than yeah. a real band. It's like five hundred dollars. Well, I think the stars are really better aligned for rock band. I mean, you got rock band, you've got harmonics, you've got uh, EA on the publishing side, you've got the MTV Association, which immediately gives you urge, right? Well, you know they're signing up, you know, big name bands to like promote the game and be in the game as well. Right, and I, I mean, I think that the model for this game has to be like I've talked about before. It has to be to a point where you can get every song, and it doesn't become song limited. Well, that's like the SingStar model. I mean, we were talking about Man of War earlier, and I'm pretty sure that the versions of SingStar that came out in Germany probably have. Oh Man yeah, War, you know? oh yeah. yeah. Italy <laughs> is like probably half yeah. half Man of War. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited for SingStar PS3 just because the huge amount of songs is going to be available, and you can really like buy what you want and only get the songs you want. You know, I, I'm, I'm excited about that. Yep, and and unfortunately, it is a good business model too. They could see us spending, oh, yeah. a, see us spending a lot of money on that. Hey, but at least it's per track, not a, 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 pa- a pack of five songs. We only want one. Yeah, that's know? true. I think that would be a good way to do it. So. That would keep us busy over the summer, wouldn't it? It would. And I tell you what, if you could get all the songs you wanted, you'd be busy all you wanted over the summer. And actually, as was pointed out on the message boards, which we'll be talking about in just a minute, there are some games coming out this summer. Maybe not a AAA, but there's some titles out there that might get you excited. So if you hang around, when we come back from the break, we'll have message boards and then a little discussion of the summer games. We'll be right back. You're listening to One Up Yours, part of the One Up Radio Network. Three, two, one. You're the We're best the around. <laughs> Listen to EGM Live, the weekly podcast for Electronic Gaming Monthly, available every Monday for download at egmlive.oneup.com or podcast.oneup.com or the iTunes Music Store. Sweep the leg. Sweep the leg, Johnny. Sweep the leg. We've got new and improved boards, but John is still out there actively going through them. And what do you know? That was a lot of stuff. There was a lot of stuff. <laughs> and not all of it was, <gasps> you broke my wiki. Broke my what? Wiki. <laughs> You, wiki? Bet, you, oh, bet, you bent my you wiki. Bet, Whatever. I think, I think you said you broke my wiki. I was like, my, you what? broke my Wikipedia? Wiki. You bent my wiki. That's a, that's a, bent my wiki. It's a uh, Ralph Wiggum reference from the Simpsons television uh, program. Okay. <laughs> okay. Except I missed it. Yeah, you did. So, um, I mean, I don't want to go into the into the board feedback because it does seem to be settling down. And it does. Sam has a thread up right now. What What does? It does seem to be settling down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like we were just talking about a minute ago. I've been reading the threads. They're getting really, really solid. Okay, but we weren't talking about it a minute ago to the people listening. <laughs> um, so Sam posted something uh, that's now like 25 pages deep. Um, just, you know, everyone seems to be to be on board with it. Something uh, to remind everyone that, that Sean had mentioned earlier in the week. A lot of people were concerned that, you know, I'm going to post something and it's going to disappear. There's a lot of stuff in that board technology that will prevent that from happening. So you can click up on the, is it thread options or something? Yeah, it's top left-hand side. Top left-hand side. side. You can float your own thread. So if you if you want to keep an eye on something, you can actually, just for your view, keep something at the top. So if you want to keep a conversation going, there's a lot of tools there to be able to do it. Um, so stuff that caught our eye. Um, Cryles um, had a post called History of the Term 1-Up. Do you know where the term one-up comes from? Um, old arcade games. So Wikipedia says it's from some Japanese term that, that is related to something else. But he said he was watching um, a show on 70s tech called the on, on the History Channel where um, Ralph Bear was demonstrating the brown box ping pong game, the thing that preceded everything else. Uh-huh. Um, and it had one up clearly visible on the screen. Hmm. And the Magnavox Odyssey, which is what the brown box turned into, didn't use it. But it's like he thinks that that might be the earliest actual use. You of know, it. I think now that now that you mentioned that, I think it was like it was for like first player is up one up and then mm-hmm. two up. Originally, yep. it yep. was like first player your time your turn go right. second player go. But well, I I don't know exactly. A lot of classic arcade from. games had it, yeah. But um, you should um, hunt down the thread. It's called History of the Term One Up. So if you want to type that into the search, you can find it. He actually posted a video that has the Ralph Bear hmm. demonstration from the History Channel. It's really interesting. We should probably know that. We should probably know that since yeah. we, <laughs> since working at one. Up, we should probably get to the bottom of that. Yeah, yeah. A term of one up for us was uh, some guy owned it and it lapsed on his GoDaddy <laughs> account, so we pounced on it. Um, Chang three. Um, do you think games will ever use racial slurs? It says games are getting more bloody. There's a lot more cursing. Um, mm. Is r- more racial discrimination coming? Because you see it in movies. And then he asks, would you be offended by it? 
It's got a lot of attention. Coromore says, Call of Duty 3 and Blazing Angels already useless. Which yeah. makes me think Coromore might be German. <laughs> I'm, w- only, I'm with you. The only slur I think that is used in that is kraut, right? That's offensive to my people. Didn't any of the... And my wife's people, too. I want to say some of the Vietnam games had some... Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. What, was that? what was the IDOS? Vietnam. The one that Shell was Shell? really... Um, oh, oh, my God. That, that was, was a lot so of bad. Death. Or or Medal of Honor, the one where you fight Japanese guys. Dun, dun. Yeah. I remember that one. So, Truly 101, I did the, there was the whole stuff with the Haitian stuff in Vice City. Um... Das Boot posted an image of the Def Jam icon box. Does that have a lot of... But I mean, that's... Uh, I, I think it actually does have the N-word in it, actually. Yeah? I think it does, yeah. And then Matthias B says, I hear it all the time on Xbox Live. Um, <laughs> Did anyone bring back Shadow Warrior? Hmm? Did anyone bring up Shadow Warrior? Uh, no, actually, why? they didn't. Oh, God. That was pretty bad, too. Jesus, that was horrible. Zero King 13 says that San Andreas, Saints Row, and Icon all said, he, as far as he's aware, all contain slurs. Yeah. But which um, Showdown 320 notes that um, a lot of them, not, it's not really confrontational in a lot of them, and that confrontational ra- racism isn't something that you see a lot in video games. That's right. Or it's, you know, but I mean, I think some of that Vietnam stuff was, as I remember, some of it was pretty, there was a whole was. lot of Vietnam games like two, three years ago. Right, yeah. right after they thought they'd run out of World War II. Yeah. It's like, right. okay, next, Vietnam. So it depends on if it's gratuitous or not, is that what we're saying? Yeah, that, I think gratuitous or, I mean, the, mean-spirited. Or, mean-spirited, or, yeah. yeah. Uh, Mike Lenock 5 uh, posted, uh, what are your favorite game quotes? I'm going to test some of you here. All right. probably, you probably won't get his because it's a bit ambiguous, which is just bah. Which what? Is apparently, a the- quote from Final Fantasy XII. Oh, how do you okay. pronounce this guy's name? Balthia? Baltia? Balthia. Balthier. 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 Oh, that's his favorite quote. <laughs> Never played the game. Doesn't sound like a very inspired quote. Um, guy on the board, Liquidus. Um, so, which game do you think this is? <laughs> the gift of the silver tongue. They say it's the mark of a good soldier and of a liar. Americans are too in love with the sound of their own voice to speak the truth. Who said it? Ooh, it's, it's in your series there. Know. you got to get it. Which one? It's familiar to me, but... Can, you name, the, can you name Metal Gear? Which one? I'm saying Metal Gear Solid Liquid Snake, I guess. It was... Do you know? Is it three? Nope. nope. Metal Gear Solid 2, and okay. it was Revolver Ocelot. Oh, Ooh. okay, that's good. Okay, this one's for you, Garnet. I got a present for you, and CNC. that was left-handed. The CNC. <laughs> it's the commando from Command and Conquer. Um, Are you kidding me? My wife knows that. She even go, I'll go a present for you. God, I hate that shit. It's as bad as John Madden. <laughs> <laughs> You'll feel that in the morning. Um, I, I was surprised that only one person uh, brought up Eat Shit and Die. Uh, Jonak13. Uh... Look, I'm not exaggerating when I say the success of your mission hangs on how you use the cardboard box. Don't <laughs> think of it as just another box. Treat it with love. Oh, that, that is a good quote. Don't be rough. Does anybody uh, cite Last Alert as, as their favorite quote? No. They won't like you if you're so stingy. People won't like you, Steve, if you're, <laughs> you're too so stingy. stingy. That's my favorite quote. Uh, ZoraLink182 <laughs> says his favorite quote is, Thank you, Mario, but our princess is in another castle. Which one's that from? It's too uh, easy. I thought it was clever when at the end of Super Mario Brothers 3 when you really do find the princess that's what she says because she's all funny and shit. <laughs> <laughs> she's like she's like psych. Okay this one you probably should be able to get. Uh, it's from I'm not sure how to pronounce it Solabe. The bad news is that we're going to have to remove your brain and place it in an armored tank to shoot innocent civilians with its psychic death beam. The good news is that your insurance is going to cover the whole thing. I'm saying tiny, tiny tank. tank up your arsenal. No. No? What? No. No. There's another game where your brain is placed in a it's tank? Psychonauts. It is. Oh. Funny. Um, Maybe now we'll get that interview. Ben, <laughs> ben the Lad had a ton, but uh, everyone uh, remembered that most was, hurt me more. Do you remember that? Uh, oh, the, yeah. S- Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> yep. Um, Eng050599 and Beige both had a lot of uh, Legacy of Quain. Le- yeah. <laughs> legacy Quain. of Kane quotes. Uh, including, I, it was no excommunication. It, I was executed. You will learn the difference. There was a lot of. They got a very sort of goth and serious at that point. What uh, <laughs> emo at that point? So this one, you might know this one. I, right. I don't know. Well, you might. You might. Mark I just it. locked an open door. Strange. That's symbolically compelling. I just locked an open door. Did Dennis Dyack write that quote? Resident Evil? No. No, I, I That's can't. That's from Grim Fandango. Oh. oh. That was a Manny quote. Um, 
So that thread is still ongoing. I think it's like nine pages deep now. And That's people, actually a pretty people, cool it's, thread. It's I pretty like that. cool thread because people yeah. are really drilling into stuff. Um, I wanted to mention the Squadron of Shame. Um, Papa Pichu actually PM'd me and said, you know, he was initially one of the ones that was worried about threads disappearing because mm-hmm. it was like tight-knit communities around one thing. But they're actually floating stuff for themselves. Right now, they're, they're kind of breaking from their usual discipline of playing really old stuff, and they're playing Odin Sphere. And some people are like, well, why are you doing that? And uh, they're actually saying that they they want to keep people talking about it because they want the game to sell. And well, I tell you what, they have they have going. a legion of fans on the eighth floor in this building because mm-hmm. I walk around and everybody's like hype on Odin Sphere, big time. Now I was uh, I was out of the office yesterday and didn't really have internet connection, but Ryan two one one posted something late last night. There was uh, something from Je France where there was a rumor that, that Nintendo is announcing Mario Kart Wii and new hardware at E three. Any of you guys see that? New I, hardware. I saw where the Mario Kart rumor had come from a false story. Someone who claimed they were at the event last week. And they, they heard all the things that were there, and it was all bullshit. It was all made up. And so apparently this, this French site had a grosse révélation on nouveau hardware. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I think this is just a trickle down of some made up mm-hmm. bullshit. What was the rumor that the hardware announcement would be? Um, it didn't really say that there was just going to be some revelation on new hardware. I mean, it might be the colored DS stuff that was kicking around. So, I mean, I, I, it's not going to be now with a third GameCube duct tape to it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we've we've added blast processing <laughs> on loan. So. About this whole summer thing, then mm-hmm. the uh, the thread online got so started. You posted something up, and people were saying, "Hey, you know, what are you talking about? There's tons of stuff, right?" That was really the immediate response. Was very quick of, yeah. "Hey, there's no." Are there's people talking about August because in August there are some good games. There's some there's there's some stuff before that though. I mean, summer is always. You know, summer is judged differently than the rest of the year because summer is always the slowest part of the year in terms of game releases, uh, which well, is weird, I still think. We must have had school. school. Yeah, it's <laughs> the opposite of the movie industry. Like, why? Yeah. People have the most free time probably in the summer, but but this summer, I mean, not that bad. Hey. No, not that bad at all because I actually went back and looked at, like, last year and, boy, we kind of had the goggles on last year, didn't we? Because I remember, like, a long period of time on this very show where we were discussing Chrome Hounds. <laughs> well, it's because we were all looking forward to the future. Like, oh, next year it's going to be different. Next year it'll be tons of games. The well, last summer there was, well, there was, I mean, it was a lot of 360 stuff. There was a Dead Rising, still very popular. Which was, that was August. But that was kind of a surprise, well, too. Like, people didn't really expect no, it to be as good and as popular as it was true. before it came out. But, and I think there's a lot in this summer that similarly could yeah. break out I, like that. I mean, last spring and last summer was the, you know, the beginning of the Xbox 360 fans moving from one game to the next game. That's when we saw right. that happening. That is very much true. In July, you had Prey, and then you had uh, Dead Rising, then you had uh, 90, 99 Nights really didn't pick up the, the flow, though, in the uh, middle of August. No. I wouldn't put, it was awful, awful, awful. I wouldn't put 99 <laughs> Nights uh, in any... Uh, you, had the, uh, you had the Battle for Middle Earth 2 strategy game on 360. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which was in July. Which, you know, she plays. No <laughs> <laughs> um, there was some PC stuff kicking around. There was Titan's Quest that got in there. There was Half-Life 2 Episode 1 at the beginning of June. Can't so forget that. That, yeah, that, was, that was huge. That was really big. That was, that was really the big, like, you know, potential AAA title going into the summer. Um, on PS2, you had GTA's Liberty City Stories, which, which despite us not talking about ton, was a huge seller. The PS2 version? Yes. I don't think the PS2 version was a huge seller. I think the PSP version was. Actually, I pulled the NPDs up. And really? really it, it did it around PS2? Yeah, I went to, like, the, what's it, American Art? Anyway, there's there's a place PS4. where you can get, like, the top ten list. They come out at, those games came out at $15. Of course, mm-hmm. they sold well. But the, it, you PS, know. the PSP version that came out a few months before it was is still, sold I think, the, a top, million. the top selling yeah. PSP game. That's not surprising. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, the PS2 version was in the top ten for the NPDs but, you know, in, these, like, these July, games are listing, You're like, oh, Lord of the Rings strategy game, a port of a PSP game. These aren't good releases, really. These aren't huge games. They aren't, right? And no. so, like, the other big games of the summer then were, like, like uh, series stuff, like NCAA Football 07, mm-hmm. Madden 07. And so, like, when we start digging into this list here for this year... There's actually a lot of yeah. there's a lot of stuff that's not just churn. I'm not sure what I'm more excited for: the Fantastic Four, Rise of the Silver <laughs> Surfer, uh, Nancy Drew's White Wolf, Icicle Creek, or Biker Mice from Mars. Biker, Biker Mice, Mice from Mars. Mars is the one that got <laughs> yeah, my, my question, attention. Can that license? How can that license still exist? There isn't any S game for that license. I don't even know what that license is. <laughs> well, I guess you'll get to play it. 
alert Greg Ford. Now we know who needs to be on the review. Okay. Shane obviously wants to check it out. Wait, there's something called Chicken Shoot that's coming for, out that's for Wii? for Wii. I'm sure it's really good. But like, so what, what, you what, do you not hear that? <laughs> no, I'm being facetious. <laughs> like, in the next game, you know, like Resident Evil 4, sure, it's a good game, but it's a port. You can't it's, get that it's excited. What, two years old now? Well, yeah. no one's counting. Well, why Why do you go to Resident Evil 4? I, mean, I was looking look at <laughs> what are those lists is interesting before that. Well, two, uh, next Big week. Brain Academy. Next week, week Tomb Raider mean, anniversary. That's kind of a big deal. That is a big deal. And what I like about that game, it's coming out at twenty nine ninety nine new. That's and fantastic. And it is, it is absolutely worth it. I adored PS2, playing so it. Lots of people will play it. Yeah, yeah I adored playing Anniversary. It was, it was unbelievable. Yeah, I think good. that game has the potential to actually be a big hit this summer. Because the will. price is right. It's a good game. So there's one of them. That's out, so we're just at the beginning of June yeah. at the same time. Now, you were poo-pooing this, but there were a lot of people well, who were paying attention to Call of War as... <laughs> uh, it's paying, not. paying attention to the funny commercials, perhaps. <laughs> they'll, they'll also be a pay, pay attention to the receipt they keep when they buy it. <laughs> but actually, one part of uh, Call of Juarez, uh, somebody was playing it. Oh, he did it. Like a, it's like a Bible adventure game. What? Call it Juarez? Call Juarez. Juarez. Uh, Juarez. It's like Would a, you like some enchiladas? <laughs> it's like one of those old uh, Bible adventure, the, the SNES uh, first-person shooter one, where you, because you are a preacher, and you, like, for your fire button, you, like, quote scripture at people. What? For Yeah, for level of the game. You also almost get a blowjob at one point. Yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah. Almost? Yeah, yeah, almost. At first I heard it was confirmed, BJ, then I heard it was night. Yeah. yeah. It's like, this will be a hot coffee. Yeah. It's like real life then, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, mentioned, you mentioned Big Brain Academy, and yes. yeah, I don't know, man, that game flopped in Japan, like land of non-games. People don't want to play that kind of game at home. I well, think. I, I'm saying for me, personally, like, it's not the kind of game I'm, I'm super excited for, but it is a game I will buy and play. Like, really? I like those games. Yeah, you don't like you're really here like, hey guys, let's go do some like spatial reasoning and math. Let's yeah, sit, let's sit down and do it. Yeah, I'm gonna hey, do that. The, the uh, AGM guys would sit around and play the uh, the last DS. But one yeah, a lot. It, it, it's fun. What? It's not fun. You didn't have fun. We'll see. Besides, aren't we players gonna be playing Scarface? <laughs> well, they actually probably are. I, judging, I'm Godfather. being totally serious. Yeah, judging yeah. from Godfather and judging from how well Scarface did the first time around, aren't they probably going to be playing Scarface? Yes. And that, it, it, kind of crazy, but they'll be able to laugh at the uh, 360 players who are playing Tenchu Z. Z or uh, Hour of Victory. Or <laughs> have you seen Tenchu Z? Has anyone here seen Tenchu Z? Tenchu, Milky like Tenchu, did a big preview of it. Tenchu is a franchise that has been running on fumes for I don't know eight years. Like seriously, does anybody want these games Since anymore? Tenchu Two, yeah, really? basically. Like, really? Yeah. Come on, really. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed the first one because it was really cool to do the stealth yeah, kills, but not so much. Yeah. Is uh, Naruto Ultimate Ninja? Which, Which is, that, is that a fighter, or is that related to the really cool-looking 360 Which one that's coming? Which is not related. No. Different different uh, publishers have different rights for all the different Naruto... The, it's the Ubisoft games. one that looks really awesome, the right? The 360 yeah, one, yeah, that they're actually th- caring about. This is not the game you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Escape from Bug Island, that comes out, oh, the same day as Resident Evil 4. That'll be a... Oh, I saw Escape from Bug Island got a 3.5, I believe, in Nintendo Power. <laughs> like, when a, Wii, when a game gets a 3.5 in Nintendo Power, you know yeah. something's wrong. Well, we we okay. kind of already skipped... Past one of the other big 360 mid June releases, which according to the demo might be awesome. Hour of Victory. I just mentioned that one. That we, yeah, you're getting old. How, how Obviously, the reading too much. So I, I don't know. There's been like a bunch of controversy over that, right? It's controversially terrible. It's, no, that part hasn't been a controversy. I think everyone's agreed the demo was terrible. It's a matter of whether or not it was actually taken down. There was some download problems with it not yeah, completing or whatever. I but uh, no. wow, not only a, a World War II shooter, but a bad World War II shooter. Wow. That's kind of scary. SimCity DS also coming out in the middle of June. John, you and I played that. Uh, you, you, you played it more than me, and you, you had issues with it, right? Well, just the, just trying to cram the real SimCity onto a DS doesn't work out quite as cool and well as I you might. I have really high hopes for it, and I, I just sort of watched you play it. I didn't. I didn't actually play. I wasn't on the review, and you, you, you had some issues with the precision of it. Yeah, screen sizes too. So, I mean, there's just some things that just because you can do them technically doesn't mean that they're necessarily such a great idea. Well, you know, that same day, instead of buying that, you could buy the Deal or No Deal game for DS, which you could also play on your PC. You make a oh. folder, and in that folder, you put like you know a picture of some money, and then you open the folder, and you see money, and it's the same as the DS game. <laughs> yeah, twenty <laughs> folders, and yeah, you don't know. Great, great. <laughs> put some sluts on there. Perfect. <laughs> if only Howie Mandel was included. Oh. God, uh, what about the Transformers game? Has anyone seen that yet? Because the last one, the PS2 one that Atari did, was awesome. Yeah, this isn't that game. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's really Just a bummer. that about it. <laughs> That's oh, all you need ni- to 19th of June. Dirt. Woo, good day. Dirt. Very good game. Right? I mean, we already in love with go. Dirt, right? And Rainbow Six Vegas finally gets over to PS3. That's Hopefully. not out yet. No. Oh, dear. Yeah. It does, it does have voice chat. 
does. Oh. And that's for Congratulations. <laughs> hey, it ain't wow. easy for the parties. So uh, then we get a big string of like some movie stuff with the Harry Potter games and the Order of Phoenix. And the Bigs, huge. The Bigs, Brian. Uh, the the, the sports guys do like yeah. the Bigs around here. He was they, getting excited about it. Yeah, they're it. digging the Bigs. They like the arcade sports, and they like that one. It plays really quick from what I was watching. That's what it I've heard. seemed like. Who's it by? 2K. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's very much like. Uh, the old Midway stuff. So the darkness, people think, is it going to have the impact? So the darkness, I think, is one of those games that could turn out to be like a Dead Rising. I think, yeah, it, could, I think it could be the Riddick of uh, the summer. It it, it absolutely oh, could. Yeah, it, that, from all I looks really good. I haven't ha- had a chance to play it, but it's like been, its gameplay ideas are in the right place. I think I they've think. been really smart with the way they've been. They've been releasing video what every week. I mean, there's been a regular trickle out, yeah. of, of, of video showing different gameplay stuff. Yeah, they just have the black hole one up today. Yeah, it looks really awesome. I think it's definitely the biggest original game for June. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree at all. I think The Darkness really is the, of all the games this summer, it's the one that's sitting, like, in the perfect spot right at the end of June and, and not a lot of major competition as far as original IP, really solid graphics engine, interesting storyline behind it. You know, possibly on the right curve as far yeah. as getting people excited for it. I think that that and Dirt in June will probably be the two of the big ones that aren't Harry Potter and the Order yeah. of the Phoenix. I think, which I think as much fun. as we like Dirt, it's still a niche title. But I so. agree. And as you're scanning through this list, can you believe how many DS titles there are? Yeah, I can believe it. Nervous breakdown. Are they serious? <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, they are. <laughs> I also noticed on PSP, not to be outdone, Hot Brain, Fire Up Your Mind. I'm sure that's going to sell uh, Big Brain Academy well, it, numbers. It's funny, we're looking here in, on the tons of DS games coming out in July, and like there's weird stuff like Life Science Surgical Unit, which is another um, surgery game. And it's actually, that was a DS launch title in Japan. That's a really, really? old game that like you had to sat around, no one thought they'd want it, but now since Trauma Center became a huge hit, it's like, well, we'll bring this other surgery game over here. Why not? The Settlers on DS. I know. Mm-hmm. Apparently, apparently, strategy game is going to get a real exercise on DS over the, over the summer. It's interesting because Advance Wars is such fun and handheld, but no one really copies that. They always try to do real time. Th- like these PC, let's bring over this more complex game, missing the whole point of why, why games like Advance Wars work, mm-hmm. or Final Fantasy Tactics and stuff like that. So, so then uh, near the end of June, early July, we have Ninja Gaiden Sigma, which we've talked right. about. On, which you got to be excited about that. Very, very great game. If you haven't played it, or if you have played it, do it again. It's. I mean, it's I played version. it. I am absolutely getting that. I'm absolutely playing it best over again. Version. I haven't played it. This is my like. I'm slotting that yeah. time for that game. Fantastic. I'm excited. Fantastic. Title. I, I don't think PS3 could do. I mean, it's so amazing that a title that is actually an Xbox game we're getting so excited about. Yeah, we are getting so excited about it, and it's well, well, the, grab, the, the level that's on fire. Have you seen that house that's completely well, I, in I've, flames? I've, I've, You've I've, played I've, it. I reviewed the game, yeah, and yeah. like, yeah, the graphics. Like we said this before, but I'll say it again. Like you'll think, oh wow, these aren't that much better. But it's because your mind remembers members are looking differently on Xbox than it does. It really does look better, and, like, the texture work is amazing, and it's a, it's a beautiful game. Yeah. yeah. I was watching uh, Nick play a build of the Mercury Meltdown Revolution for Wii the other day. That finally actually delivers on the original McLean promise of, you know, oh, tilt control. At Archer McLean. The original McLean promise. <laughs> the original McLean I'll promise. Get you to yet. the bank. I'll so, get you so yet, Archer McLean. It took Archer McLean leaving for them to deliver on his promise. <laughs> well, simply because they never they never did the actual tilt sensor they promised. Yeah, there was them. supposed to be some like, little USB thing that was going to Archer attach. McLean told me that it was a, uh, a poison hazard, so uh, they couldn't release it. It had mercury in it. And it had real mercury in it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Maybe they should have, I don't know, done one that didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I was really surprised from watching it how uh, how well the Wii controller actually worked to control that with precision. I mean, usually most of the stuff we do with the Wii is like, you know, big sweeping strokes and that kind of stuff. You can actually control that little block. I hope block. it's better than that marble nonsense that came out a few weeks ago. Hokoro Rimpa? Yeah. It was yeah. a fan, fan favorite. Got good scores. Really? Yeah. Because, like, the... Because that was well, one where the angle on the screen didn't match the angle you were holding the the pad at, which was kind of it was like totally. Oh, that's awkward. Yeah. God, Monkey Ball. Did they ever fix Monkey Ball? Like that game at E3 was just a freaking nightmare. The Wii game. The Wii one. It came out last year. Yeah, I know. But did they? Fix it? <laughs> did they fix it? That was my question. Well, I don't know. All right. <laughs> okay. So what else we got fans. here? Manhunt uh, Two, the goriest, the bloodiest, most fucked up upest game. Well, you, of you jumped into summer. July before we hit some of these other big things like. Well, Let's talk about uh, Ratatouille and Magic Ball. Wait. Well, we talked about Overlord. Overlord's going to be out at the end of June. Mm-hmm. And the PC is finally going to get G- Graw 2. Yeah, and the PS3 Graw 2. I don't know what happened to that one. 
there's a Defender of the Crown game coming out? Yeah, I'm sure it's excellent. Heroes live forever. And if you don't want that, you can always pick up Deer Drive. I miss that as Beer Drive. <laughs> it sounded like a lot better game. No, it's Deer Drive. It must be like a chronicle of the great sport of Louisiana where you drive around in a pickup truck and jump out with a rifle. <laughs> That's where they do where I'm from, too. I think there's a typo here. There's uh, something for PC uh, listed as Severs. Severs? <laughs> You know what? Well, wait, I saw yeah. the, my most my, my favorite DS game, Clue slash Perfection slash Aggravation slash Mousetrap. Mousetrap, I'll play that. Mousetrap on DS. Those are all good. That's all four on one on one game. Wow. So also at the beginning of July, you're gonna get iToy Play Three, which will be big in the casual market. And that's a huge. I mean, that's gonna be a big summer release. Big for kids. Yeah, big for kids. Big for people hanging out at a house. So I mean, that's cool. Moto GP comes back on 360. <laughs> I don't know. Some people like it. I just think, uh, uh, <laughs> hey, Worms Open Warfare 2, because Worms Actually, Open Warfare was such a rousing success. I will say, Worms on DS could be good, right? But Worms could Open be. Warfare 1 on DS, not, not, so much. not good. No? Okay. And then another of those uh, games from Japan that you wondered how they were going to translate when they come over to 360, the latest after the Bullet Witch will be Vampire Reign at the beginning. Yeah, if you like Bullet Witch, no way you didn't like Bullet Witch. <laughs> Nobody liked Bullet Witch. <laughs> Milky liked Bullet Witch, didn't he? Oh, yeah, he didn't. It was, got a, I mean, it was all relative. It was like, I mean, I think he's, it, it was like, well, it doesn't suck. Well, here's the thing. Well, you have to get quite to the, liking it. You have to get to the third level because it's much better after That's the true. first two. I, I have to pull that out sometime to play with it. I Vampire it, Rain? Sort of unanimous crit- you didn't think, like, with the, with the sort of unanimous nature of everyone's feedback that someone there would have said, hey, you know what? Maybe we should just lop off the first two levels. <laughs> well, they were important to the narrative. Very That's right. Oh, it had a really, like, deep, involving <laughs> narrative that <laughs> they couldn't have explained with a cutscene. Okay, now we have have reached Manhunt 2. Now we have reached Manhunt 2. I'd like to talk about Manhunt 2 because I stopped playing it. And I think the Wii version is the way to go, 100%. 100% Wii so version. It's out on 9th of July. It actually PSP. looks better, right? It looks markedly better. And the gameplay is considerably more complex and involved on Wii in every possible way. Is there, oh, it's something, the question I have about this is is this potentially going to undo all the goodwill that the Wii has? <laughs> I think that if someone like, you know... All the family credit that it's got, yeah, the so world it, is going to be what under... Is it, there, is, there is no doubt in my mind that as much attention as it's getting on CNN and other, you know, highline mass media outlets, right. that they will definitely like, cover the Manhunt 2 comes to the Wii right. Family well, I Console. Think, I think Manhunt 2 has potential to hurt Nintendo a lot more than it'll hurt well, Take 2. The fact that the Wii version is considerably more violent, bloodier, and since you are actually mimicking real murder motions, it is... In a way, a murder simulator, I think the Wii version is going to take the, the brunt of that. I don't know. I mean, you'll hear about it from the same people that you normally do, but I don't see how it's any more... I mean, you're blowing people's heads off in Resident Evil Right, 4. but in, in this, for example, when you go to kill somebody with a pen, which is one of the things you can do, you actually, like, stab them. It's like you stab, like, five times. Right. That's how you stab. You see you, them stabbing it in the person's I mean, eye. Like, people will definitely take the angle that there's this kid's machine, and now it's got a game where you can do right. this. Well, you can kill people with things that are lying around the house. Right, but like, well, like, okay. you imagine manhunt. You like can imagine plastic, bags. Like plastic yeah. bags and, and garrots and all that kind of stuff, right. and you're going to be doing it with your hands. Like, imagine walking in and seeing a seven year old kid with that on the screen, oh, and dear. like with the Wiimote and nunchuck yeah. in his hands, like dragging a plastic bag over somebody's head. I will say, is, but in terms of the game itself, and away from the controversy, it's more of a shooter than the last game. There's more, there's more gunplay mm-hmm. and like cover, and it's a little more traditional. Yeah, because the first manhunt didn't really get a gun very often, right? right? No. It get ammo very. They definitely often. added more. More gunplay. But the thing about Manhunt to me, because I actually kind of liked Manhunt, and the part that I liked about it was if you wore the headset, it was such a creepy freaking experience. Oh, yeah. yeah, with all the chat. Yeah, with yeah. all the chat, and then like you had to actually watch your own breathing because they would hear you if yeah. you got like startled or something. That was really, right. really. I, I will cool. say, as a fan of disturbing, fucked up shit, this one is not quite as weird and disturbing. Yeah, yeah but, it's sad to hear that. Yeah, but what are you going to do? What else we got in July? We talked about Silphied. Um All Pro Football 2K8 comes out 16th of July. Yeah, so Enemy uh, Territory Quick Wars. So we're gonna just oh, sorry, yeah, I missed that oh, one. Yeah, not bloody likely. It's, it's right I, I put that out there. Look, there, it ain't happening. That's not. Yeah. <laughs> it ain't happening. I, you know, I've already NDA'd up for the for the beta, and that hasn't even started yet. So I see. I see. At least not at the level they're bringing us into it. So I think it's too far it's away. Smell like a September on that one, maybe. Yeah. Not before, not in the summer. I would smell more like a November. Ooh, wow. What do you think Let's Ride Friends Forever is? <laughs> I think it's about ponies. Oh, okay. Uh, but on the all-pro football <laughs> tip, uh, Brian was talking about this. He's, he's looking forward to it. But I still think the lack of licensed players and licensed teams, I know it has the legends, 
but it's a full price game. Yeah. It's sixty dollars. It's coming Look, out. It's coming out before NCAA even, which is I pretty think stunning. Regardless of whether it succeeds or not, all pro football has already done its job and it's put a like a bomb under EA to start trying to innovate well, again. They actually are making the first real next gen Madden this year. Yeah, yeah. and you see the weather dot com thing. That's kind of awesome. That is kind of awesome. I think the deal with, with All Pro Football 2K, its success will hinge on whether or not it recaptures the visual concepts feel, which was significantly different from the Madden feel. And you, you when you played football games, you either liked you either liked the you know the 2K way or you liked the Madden way. And for people who like the 2K way, going back to Madden reminded them of everything they didn't like about that. So if they can get that part right, mm-hmm. there will be many people willing to go in and create the players. Plus, it has all the famous historical the historical guys. But- and that's a lot of fun. Hardcore football fans should buy this game as a thank you for 2K for inspiring EA. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, yeah, that's a damn the, good point by itself. For the, for the good of football games in general, that's yeah. you should and, support and it. And if you're a hardcore player who would buy two football games, well, then you'll buy it. But I think if you're only somebody who buys one football game, this isn't going to deter you from waiting for Madden. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really eagerly looking forward to it. So, But I'm a big football fan, right. obviously. So. Day after, Parappa the Rapper, PSP. I'm a big Parappa fan. I do think that... Are you going like, to buy it again, though? I bought the Japanese version already. But I think for the average... So, per- yes. You're sick. I think for the average person, the fact that when PS1 games get ported onto UMD, it's kind of a ripoff. Uh, yeah. And D&D Tactics, let me tell you, you the surprisingly good tactics game. Really? Yeah. And it's Didn't really game already so come these, out, or am I confusing with something else? No, these are all 17th of July, apparently. Pretty much everything we've talked about in the last five minutes is that day. <laughs> the big middle of big, July big release. Big day release in July. Also, Hot Shots Tennis for PS2, which is actually really yep. good. And that's the day the Guitar Hero Encore comes out, too. So D&D Tactics has a lot of the D&D feel, and I think people will really dig on that. And the graphics look really solid. The only problem that I've seen so far is the loading times were really, really... Was that game supposed to come out like six months ago? I don't know when it was supposed to come out. I know that Kuji has been working on it, and they're like committed to making it like really, really, really perfect. So... I'm not surprised it's not going to be till July. Interesting, though, also looking at this, is that apparently EA is going to run NCAA Football 08 out there right against All Pro Football 2K. Well, that, no. That's going to be well, a big challenge. Yeah. NCAA always comes out then. Yeah, because Madden's a month late. 2K is purposefully like sniping a day before to try to steal sales. Yeah. Okay. NCAA. okay. Um, we haven't actually been talking about a lot of the RPGs that are coming out. There are, there are several. Yeah, um, I see Persona 3 here. Persona 3, I'm that. very excited. I mean, I'm, I'm a big old school Persona fan, and that's coming out for PS2 in end of July. But there's a lot of cult love for the Shin Megami Tensei series. Yeah, and this one, it's, it's a little bit of a departure, though. It's like half a dating sim, and we'll kind of see how people take to that. Mm-hmm. Wow. But uh, I'm looking forward to playing it for sure. That is kind of bizarre, huh? Yeah. NASCAR 08 also coming out at the end of July. Yeah. And then actually, I would say, you know, uh, it's not bolded here, but Mario Strikers Charged. Like, that was oh, yeah. the Did I miss surprise that? Of, I did totally miss that. People that was kind of the surprise that, of the yeah. Nintendo event. Yeah, and I, I played it, and I haven't played a soccer game probably since, like, NES soccer. Well, I was surprised that this wasn't a port. I thought it was. Right. Everybody did. Everybody right. did. And, not I mean, it. you know, it, at first blush, screenshots or whatever, it does look really similar. And uh, But it's much more of, like, the old, uh, the old ice hockey balance with the different characters. A lot of crazy stuff. Really fun multiplayer, like four player multiplayer really fun uh, and, that's surprising and it's online and you can play against strangers right which is pretty surprising yeah, which is really cool. is that? that's the 30th cool. july um other things that week lair and warhawk are apparently that week yeah we yeah, gotta lair, look forward to lair and lair could be another I'm, i think another I'm, uh dead rising yeah like another i'm definitely living, looking yeah. forward to yeah lair. it could be the ps3's version of the darkness I don't, I mean, sure. are you guys looking forward to lair? i am i am yeah. absolutely right. are you kidding me just making sure something yeah. else i'm looking forward to is the week after is i'm really looking forward to stranglehold I don't think it's coming out in August. You don't? No. Really? If it does, I'm excited, but I don't think it's coming out in August. Yeah, because the last time I saw that Sony Gamers Day, it was, it was yeah, looking yeah, better. Yeah, I think better. that that and Two Human, which is also here for August 6th, not so much. Well, okay, yeah. That, probably not. Oh, here's another good RPG coming out in August 7th, John, John Dark. It's a tactical RPG from level oh, 5. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's... that's well, and as, as, as we get in the middle of August, you can see that it really starts to kick back into gear with some heavy hitters. You Metroid can, you see, Prime! Madden NFL hits, Metroid Prime hits, Bioshock hits, Medal of Honor Airborne comes in there, and then and then you get Blue Dragon at the end of the month for oh, 360 yeah. fans. Well, and, and actually, don't, in Silent Hill Origins, have you played that, Shane, oh, yeah. recently? Yeah. Like, I'm shocked. It looks really good. Uh, like, last time yeah. I played it at the at the Sony Gamers Day, it looked, I was well, stunned. You, you missed a few weeks ago when we talked about this, but like, yeah, the version that was shown last year and the game that is, exists now are more or less completely different games. Yeah. yeah. So it sounds like we stand corrected. The, the drought? There was plenty of stuff in there that we were saying nice things about. That's true. Right. So I think that the thing that's kind of confusing is that the, the AAA titles have pushed back. Yeah. But there's plenty of A stuff that if you're, you know, if you're a fan of any console, whether it be handheld or PS2 or 360 there's or PS3, there's, there's stuff worth buying and you're going to have time to play it. You're not going to feel 
feel yeah. like, oh, I have to buy 25 games and I can't play what I wanted to play. I still wish Mass Effect was coming out. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's nice to want things. It is. And, oh, and we kind of skipped it. Uh, Two Human was also still in that release list, like somewhere over the end of the summer. We, no, we, Wait, I, I mentioned it. Did you forget to take your Alzheimer's medication? <laughs> Dude, I'm reading. I've been, I'm sorry. I was reading down the list all the time. I was reading the list of reading ahead. Anyway, coming up in the next segment, we're going to have news and we're going to kick it off with a bunch of game announcements to follow up on this game theme. And uh, so stick around. You'll be wanting to hear it. We have some crazy quotes. I wish I could stick around. I can get back to work on my deadline. See you cats later. Go, go make the magazine. Yeah. We'll talk to you next week. Check it. This is the sound of us walking across your mom's ass. DFW Radio. Listen to our podcast. Yo, yo. DFWRadio.1up.com. Podcast.1up.com. Get it at the iTunes Music Store every Tuesday. <laughs> You are listening to One Up Yours on the One Up Radio Network. All right, we got a ton of news to get through. We will rock out as quickly as possible, but without Shane here, we'll feel like a man down. But you guys, you guys will carry the slack, right? Down one man, yeah. yeah. We'll do it. All right, they got it covered. We're going to kick it off with a bunch of game announcements to follow up on that game thread. And the first one is Need for Speed Pro Street, a whole new direction. And John's been in the middle of the racing line. Oh, I've done. You've that. been living it. I've been spending so much time with that game. Um, it's Need for Speed. Uh, I guess sixteen technically. <laughs> Is it really? Yeah. Surprisingly, don't. If you call include, it that. if you include the um, the handheld sort of alternate versions of Carbon and Most Wanted, it was Most Wanted Five One Zero and Carbon. Dear God, that's Take a big city or whatever. But um, it, they're very different direction. They're um, they're keeping with the street culture thing, but they're taking it in a little more. It's a little bit further down, a sort of more Forza kind of path, but nowhere near as hardcore as that. There's a lot of the modding system is a lot more. It's the first like proper next gen um, Need for Speed like the graphics engine the physics engine everything are like much much better than yeah, they put out one trailer but it was just CG it was just a little like teaser thing it's yeah. the only thing and we've seen was, so far there was another one right is mm, there a second I, one I, I don't know I think the only one that, I've, that I saw was that CG like two cars yeah. going down the thing but uh, I think it could be it could be really interesting it's like it's not open world anymore it's like circuits and famous locations around the world with street racing it's um, grip they brought um, drift and um, uh, drag back because drag wasn't in carbon. Um, and then what's the other one? There's four events: drift, grip, drag, speed, which is like a sort of crazier version, which is out in the desert. Oh, that's the thing we were talking about, where you just like race off and yeah, everybody's so going nuts. Anyone that's a real car head might have heard of a car called Big Red, which was a '69 Camaro that some guy built in like the late '80s that um, did 222 miles an hour and they modded it so severely. So it's like it's take it's actually taking the modding engine in the game and letting you just go fucking nuts with it and then st- take it out to the desert and just fire it as fast as you possibly can. So it's not like drag; it's more like a it's just a full on speed challenge. But there's there's some interesting stuff and it's it's a different direction I think some of the more casual Need for Speed fans might be put off but I think some people that are maybe looking at fours are going eh maybe that's a bit much for me this might be right in the sweet spot I, you were like, he's like, uh, folks, he's understating how excited he's been about it. He's been up there to actually see the game. We've had them it, down yeah. because we, we have a big story running next week. We have a we cover have a story on it. We have on it next week. So we have a preview. We have an interview with uh, Hanno Lemka, who is the, he's the GM of Black Box, but he was also the guy who was on the original Need for Speed, the Road and Track Need for Speed game. Right. It came out in 95 or whenever it was. And it was him and Don Matrick who actually, before they did Need for Speed, they were on um, Test Drive for Accolade. Hmm. And it was the original Test Drive team that went and did the 3DO Need for Speed game. Wow, convoluted history, but that's yeah. cool. All right, so we got that to look forward to, and we, all sorts of other interesting, weird games to look forward, which we'll start getting into now with Warren Spector and John Woo creating a movie and game combo called Ninja Gold. Wow. <laughs> Ninja Gold. Maybe uh, Ninja that Gold. URL wasn't taken or something. I mean, the, the, that combo sounds awesome. Ninja John Gold? I don't know. Well, so we haven't heard very much about, there's, there's been very little revealed about what it's going to be, but they are apparently working together and developing characters, locations, and themes. The core concept is being credited to Spectre and the situation and story development to Woo. And so, the name being attributed to <laughs> the marketing department. <laughs> uh, we talked about Silent Hill a little this while. This movie's going to be Ninja Gold, guys! 
Please. <laughs> God, it really does sound like that, doesn't it? It's awful. Uh, Silent Hill, we talked about um, a relationship to the Origins. Mm-hmm. Five, though, apparently, we, we, some hints, more rumors starting to come out about it. Um, SilentHill5.net had a story where they were uh, doing an interview with one of the producers, and he was talking about how they haven't landed on a platform yet. So it's unclear whether this is going to be multi-platform or singular platform. He seemed to be leaning somewhat towards Sony's PlayStation 3. He says, we've been assessing next-gen consoles such as Sony's PlayStation 3. We've looked at other consoles too, but they exact limitations which could delay progress, but we have not decided on a console yet. Hmm. I wonder if he means hard drive like as standard as one of the limitations. Uh, You're going to hear about that shit a lot. Yeah, I mean, Silent Hill has always been kind of associated with the PlayStation yeah. brand, so I'm sure they'd be leaning that way, but I don't know. I mean, it's uh, it's much less of an easy call than it used to be. Sounds like sounds like there's a good chance, though, in July at E3 we'll get to hear some more about it. Good. Uh, yeah, I would, I would hope we would. We've talked about PSP and Wii ports. Apparently PSP and PS2 are also very good buddies. Siphon Filter Dark Mirror, the PSP game, is going to come over to the PS2. Oh, thank God, a two-year-old PSP game. <laughs> Well, Actually, I, it was a very good PSP game for that. But see, that was kind of the deal, right? This does seem to be like, oh my god, let's get more stuff on the PS2 right now. Yeah, I am kind of surprised. I mean, especially now that, because uh, what's the name of the new one? Gabe Shadow or something Logan, like that? Logan, Logan Shadow. Shadow. So this is going to drop about at the same time Logan Shadow hits for the PSP. So it's going to lead on the PSP and then eventually come to the PS2. So does that mean we're going to get all the PSP launch games finally put into PS2? We're going to get the Twisted Metal? We're going to get the Wipeout that we never got? Um, I mean, now that the PS2 did it what it did, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. You know, that's money in the left on the Easy table. way to maintain the release list for the PS2 it, with time. all the people still buying it, yeah. right? I yeah. never I never really liked Siphon Filter as a franchise, um, but I, I, Dark Mirror was noticeable better than well, the ones and, before and it. I used to be a huge fan and hadn't really paid attention. I'd heard pretty good things about Dark Mirror. Still didn't get me back into it. I liked one and two. I mean, that's how old. But but I will say at Sony Gamers Day, uh, Logan Shadow looked really good and it had a, you know, the, doing stuff with the budget and the story and the music and stuff. They were really treating it like a like a real big franchise game, even though it's leading on the PSP. So, uh, and then we also had like some direct feed. The game looks really good. That and SOCOM, like Sony knows what they're doing now. Pretty big indication of the PSP and PS2 uh, library-wise are going to really just continue to merge. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I don't get the power of this name brand in the last few months because I've been hearing it every time I turn around. What is the deal with Naruto? Ah, uh, well... someone explain to me why everyone's so excited, why there's so many titles, and why I'm now seeing that they're announcing a, a D3 is going to bring the first of the RPG games ever brought over to America over? Well, I mean, it's it's not like a new thing. It's been big for a long time, but... But not here, right? Well, no, I think the reason that, at least the reason I've been hearing about it is because of Ubisoft's 360. It's very convoluted, like different publishers have different uh, systems and different aspects of the game and different storylines and whatever, but the 360 game is the one that actually looks really good. Uh, that stuff I... But so everybody like, else is riding the coattails? Right, well, but it's been bigger. It's in... Is it Shonen Jump that it runs in? Yeah, I think so. So the strip runs in... in uh, the strip. The, the manga runs in Shonen Jump. Um, there's a TV show that's been getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and there's like so many games in Japan, and something needed to fill the void of Dragon Ball Z, which is what? There's like 10 years since yeah, the new it content like, on Dragon Ball yeah, was created. Yeah, it hits that same that same audience. Usually the games are pretty kiddy, but uh, but yeah. Some good stuff coming. You know, actually, there's a whole lot of re-release announcements here. This one, Shane, will, I know, has already been jumping for joy over. They're going to re-release every Metal Gear Solid game. For what? But for PS2, they're they're just gonna oh they're just printing them. more. They're gonna they're gonna re-release them and bring them back out. They're gonna be bundling them up. There's no word on like you know what they're gonna have as far as new content and extras. But I mean, it's, don't you think that if they're announcing that they're gonna do these re-releases, that there'll be something we'll special? Throw something in there. I yeah, think a lot of it is is also in the build up to MGS4. It's like play all the previous ones and they run on the PS3. So like own the whole set, right? right. Yeah. There's a glut of MMOs out there. There's an interesting one now from NC Soft down in Austin, which is Dungeon Runners, which they've been talking about for a long time, but haven't really gotten much excitement or interest in because it's not really a, 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 tra- it's a lame name. I was just well, going to say another <laughs> unfortunate name. Unfortunate name, and it's not a traditional retail product. They're taking the the more Asian approach, which is the game is free, and then it's all microtransaction. Oh, uh, it was only a matter of time, <laughs> right? It's all so it's all driven by. Also, you can buy a five dollar membership to get more stuff where you can use more badass armor, and you can use. So it's not microtransaction. It's it's free to play, and then the enticement is that you start playing it, and you like 
like it and you pay five dollars a month to get access ah, to more the, stuff um, the hellgate financial elitism model it that's, is very similar to that right it's, it's interesting all these different models for mmos i wonder when it's all said and done though if everyone's just going to go back to warcraft i mean it's like if the game is there well, here's the deal with dungeon runners it is free to play and apparently it is a really kind of cool if you know a little bit graphically dumbed down but a really kind of cool diablo 2 clone and you can go play it for free right so you might as well go and try it out dungeon runners um is available for nc soft or the official site which is dungeonrunners.com other announcement american mcgee back out again finally with grim's tales wait is it american mcgee's grim's tales Yes. Okay. Is it American McGee's? Or I is mean, that's Grimm's? part of the name, right? Right. It is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Who does it belong to? <laughs> There's a custody battle over who who the tails belong to. Uh, so a lot of interesting artwork, so, as usual, with American McGee needs games. To tell American McGee that his name doesn't really mean quite what it used Supp- to. <laughs> Supposedly, I had heard like it wasn't him that wants his name on something. It was a publisher or something. I don't know. I don't know where I heard that. Well, Although, the, I did. I did kind of enjoy Scrapland. Scrapland? The robot one. Uh, that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's being developed in Shanghai, and the artwork, of course, as always for American Mickey Games, is like the like the initial part where you look at it and you go, wow, that looks really cool, right? The other interesting element of this is that GameTap is handling the publishing because it's going to be apparently an episodic thing. Oh, so That's cool. GameTap's doing a lot of, a lot yeah. of stuff, a lot of stuff like that. Game out. tap is going nuts, and that's like the big thing we have to talk about next, which is the game tap vice president recently was talking about the new service offering they're going to have. One of the things it's, is they're going to bring the Mac community into the game tap world. Thank which you. Is... <laughs> about fucking time. <laughs> They're also going to do something that uh, that has been seen in other parts of the internet culture, but hasn't really sp- you know spilled over into games before. Which is they're going to do completely free to play, ad supported games, yeah. and, and not junker games. One of the games that they listed here is Tomb Raider Legend. You'll be able to play Tomb Raider Legend solely supported by advertising in the Game Tap interface. It'll be like cave walls all painted with like Red Bull advertisements, or I, how's that? How's that I don't know exactly. How it's, I would anticipate that it's going to be something like maybe it runs in a window. No. Oh, okay. Have you played Game Tap? That would suck. No, I have a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I but actually, apparently, I'll soon be able to enjoy its creamy, sugary goodness. I want to. I want to jump onto it myself. I, I actually talked to the Game Tap guys and have an account set up. I just need to get in there and play it. But the, the idea of supporting games through ads—Are you guys cool with that? I mean, we have a lot of well. They, again, that, that, that all that all depends. If they replace the dogs in Tomb Raider with like cans of Mountain Dew chasing you, then that's bad. But if it's like, <laughs> oh, that would be kind of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if I if I have to watch a thirty second commercial, then I get to play as long as I want. Yeah, sure, great. Beat the boss and it plays a commercial for you. Right, the Ooh, boss. Thank you. The boss is like, I'm glad you finally made it here. Like, I'm impressed you made it here so far. It could only be your yeah. you know Nike Drink running this. suit that Mountain got Dew. you here. Yeah, exactly. Well, so it's interesting, and just because I beat this drum, everyone's gonna get mad at me. But I have to come back because Reed, uh, the gentleman they were interviewing, whose last name is Reed, and I. Uh, can't david reed he's the games tap vp of marketing was talking about episodic later because of course one of the other things game tap has done very well is sam and max which is very much episodic he says game taps delivery mode model follows from television tv series have to deliver on schedule because they have air dates what a shock from a company that's a television company right and then he took a little pot shot at valve after that but i'll refrain from that because I mean, <laughs> i'm I not sure what drum you were banging in that statement that i think it's cool that they're i'm supporting them oh. in that they're doing episodic and that they are following that release really? schedule and that what? they've really done a season with sam and max and that's really cool yeah. that's that's taking that model where it needs to go that is cool that they did that but i really want them to do it with a franchise that's going to be big enough to to really test the oh, right. episodic idea right like not a niche thing something. what would you put in there I mean, you know, I'm talking about like the biggest franchises, like See, Grand I mean, the Theft Auto, Halo. They could do it with Sam and Max is because it wasn't like this huge production. Right. It was all about the art and the script and the the execution of the Sam and Max games is pretty simple. Right. Well, I and think, they stuck to the engine though they once they the had engine. it. So I think the problem with getting more ambitious is that's when you get into into Valve nonsense. Right. Well, I'm not talking about like practicality at all. Like I'm talking about like Dream or <laughs> Dream World. You know, I, I I wanted somebody to test I the whole I can't have. real episodic thing <laughs> with a real huge triple-a franchise but well we know that starcraft 2 is coming now and we're all excited about that but uh msnbc caught up with rob pardo who in a absolutely no surprise move said it's not going to be 2007 he said i can give you the old blizzard mantra of it'll ship when it's ready but it's something that historically we've learned to keep release dates really close to the vest they won't even say 2008 no. Right. He said some people were hoping because of how advanced the game looks that we'd have it out by Christmas, but that's definitely not happening. Okay. So back to what we were talking about originally with this Christmas next year. 
Yeah, probably. Why are yeah. they so? Why are they beating so hard on the? It's going to be PC and Mac only. Then, do you think? Sorry, you said beating so hard on. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. With, there, Bliz- with Blizzard, I, w- w- what's the track record with Blizzard and announcing games and when they come out? Is that well? Typical? Many of my buddies used to have this rule that with Blizzard, when, whenever you, whenever they announced a game, you took how long it was from the day that they announced it to the announced date, you doubled that, and then you added a year, and that was when it would come out. Wow, that's you guys had a, like a complicated you formula. That, <laughs> you have that formula written on the whiteboard in your, in your room or something? <laughs> no, no, we had it memorized. It was easy, and it actually it worked perfectly for the. Diablo 2 and uh, StarCraft and the Diablo 2 expansion. It is amazing how uh, how they kept that all under wraps and how far along the game l- right. look. It does look really far along. I'm not surprised people think like, oh, shit, it's finished. It's coming out this fall. But, uh, yeah. So Next the- year. Next year, you guys think? And yeah. Next year. And I still think, I still think it's going to be on consoles. I think they'll be... I think they'll try and, and license it off elsewhere. But I, they kind of... I would have thought they would have done that with World of Warcraft by now, and they didn't. I mean, they they've always stayed pretty focused. I mean, they could they could be, you know, Although Starcraft down or would side be, adventures or you know. But it would it is much easier to bring to consoles, right, than something like World of Warcraft. And they already have some energy and some you know they already have some mind share in the console world because of the hype for Starcraft Ghost, even though it's sat you know now and who knows what's happened to it, and the fact that they did Starcraft on N sixty four, right? But then yeah, both of those things also prove like well, I mean Starcraft on sixty four, I don't know if they really regarded that <laughs> as a success. And then yeah, they're also not in a position where they're under any pressure, exactly <laughs> financial pressure to do it. It's like they're going to release the game. It's going to sell three million copies in Korea alone, which will more than pay for the development of the game. Right. It's like they're one of those. They have probably more luxury than just about any other developer in the world right now, except for maybe Nintendo. Maybe. Maybe Nintendo. Uh, not one to usually get really overly proud, but at the beginning of this little segment here, we have on uh, how the console wars are going and how different game companies are doing. Nintendo finally came out, and um, you know, uh, George Harrison for Nintendo, in talking with Wired, said that. Uh, Microsoft and Sony may be stuck a little bit in the Hollywood mentality of only going for blockbusters and not getting um, not getting in touch with just having a regular flow of games and games that have legs. Hmm. He argues that uh, the, 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 the winning formula is pretty basic, that you, you create games that have long legs and that they maintain sustained demand month after month, which is something that historically Nintendo games have done very well at, right? Yeah, that's true. But, uh, but I mean, some Microsoft, I mean, Halo is, look at a classic example. That game has legs like nobody's business. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and Sony has, you know, some franchises like that too, Gran Turismo. I mean, Nintendo franchises, I will say, yeah, on the whole, sell have longer legs especially these these more adult type generations games are definitely selling i mean the top 10 list in japan most of them are a lot of them are games from like a year ago two years ago but yeah. that's not it hasn't always been the case with nintendo either so so we talked about manhunt 2 in the center in the middle segment is that part of then of the approach you think that do you think nintendo green lights something like that on their console because they're thinking to expand the marketplace no i think they want to be seen to be uh, not chasing after any particular niche because they're selling so much faster than everybody else. They need to be seen to be appealing to everybody, and I think Manhunt is is an attempt at that. I think it's a little clumsy. I think. Well, I think they were really happy to get the Resident Evil game, especially Resident Evil Four. Uh, but those came a little later because I think they were happy to get those because it helped the GameCube not be seen as just a kid system. Yeah. So I think they're happy to get this a little earlier on to say to the core gamers and the like the older males like hey this system is for you too. So I think they're happy in in, in that respect. I think it's the wrong game for for that platform. Well, it's interesting because it seems to be like an example out of that Hollywood strategy. Here's how he explained the Hollywood strategy that he talked about. He said, we have a belief that we can be of this life cycle, 40 to 45 percent of the hardware that's being sold, and that'd be a phenomenal increase for us over the GameCube era. Well, that's like an understatement. (laughs) Yeah. So on the other hand, we could get over 50 percent. A lot of that depends on what our competitors do. If they only focus on Grand Theft Autos and Halos and things of that nature, then they're focusing on a very tiny part of the market. Well, he's basically what he's saying is they're only focusing on a tiny part of the market. We only 
know that those that those are the games that the mm-hmm. competitors are focusing on. So it's an interesting. I mean, that is true. Like so far, the attempts like Viva Pinata. I mean, maybe that was too early or whatever. Yeah. But Microsoft, their big thing that they have yet to prove is to appeal to that that wider market. That's their huge. And I think with men, I mean, it's pure speculation. There's there's no information to back this up. But what I think might have happened with the with the manhunt thing is that Nintendo was like we need some big name stuff that's going to appeal to a different part of the market you know we can't just be seen to be chasing the thing that we're making all the noise about we need to placate the hardcore the M-rated crowd they go talk to Rockstar you know I can just imagine the Reggie Rockstar conversation we want we want GTA 4 on Wii and the Tails is going no fucking way mate it's just never going to happen okay what else you got <laughs> you know I mean just what it, seems, it just seems like st- that's a lot of people I'm sure would disagree but it seems it just seems gratuitous to put Manhunt on Wii hmm well, I think a part of it also is the publishers are definitely gaining interest in being on the Wii. Well, yeah, big time, yeah. And then, I mean, you have the PS2 game that you're already making, right? So, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's weird that the Wii version looks better because I'm surprised it's not just a real super straight, simple port. But, but yeah, everybody's talking about they got to put more games on Wii. There's tons of money in Wii. CNN Money uh, has a story coming from the June 11th issue of Fortune magazine. It's a very long article that talks about uh, how the Wii is rocking the business industry. Um, they have like a, a big in-depth uh, article where they're talking with uh, Miyamoto. A couple of pieces I pulled out of this is interesting is that they later on in the article they get into how big EA now is into the Wii, which is something we've heard from yeah. from them several times. Um, they're actually it talks about how they're working on a Steven Spielberg title the Steven Spielberg title is a Wii game mm-hmm. and that the latest FIFA soccer game which I didn't know this part is going to have me characters on the Wii so you'd be playing I know that was my response too but <laughs> the face I just pulled yeah <laughs> um oh yeah I mean, <laughs> so it's, well in Activision also I don't know if you have this in there had their had an earnings call or something this week where they said uh they're going much more heavy into the Wii. They didn't realize. I keep hearing that from tons and tons of third parties. Well, well and that's the big point. If FIFA is going to include Mies, which is not like where FIFA has been before as far as no. my... So this is obviously some alt FIFA, right? Is it FIFA 08 or is it FIFA... I don't know. It's just little dumb the way people. the way the way the little quote FIFA? is. That Are you talking about, are talking FIFA about game. games with legs? Well, if any of the games with me's in them are to be, this will have none. <laughs> Everyone will just hop around on the, like these little right. label things. <laughs> so, and, and then I also had uh, some comments from Ubi, who have my life coach and my word word coach coming as like alternative titles for the Wii later this year. It's good to see that stuff's coming. So they obviously have the uh, the Hollywood end, the Sony's and the Microsoft on the defensive because uh, <laughs> this is an amazing quote. Jack Trenton, the president and CEO of Sony Computer Entertainment America, uh, responded in the article about, he says, uh, here's his response to the success of Nintendo. He says, you have to give Nintendo credit for what they've accomplished. Who then, then it says it was quick to point out that Sony has come up with some innovative controllers as well. <laughs> <laughs> but the Wii's selling four times as many as anything that they're doing yeah. right now. So, but obviously, it's, it's no surprise that Activision and all the big name publishers, Ubi, I mean, they're the top three. Right, they're shifting emphasis towards the Wii. They're just going to go where the audience is, and right now it's the Wii. And here's where the defensiveness really comes in. He says, but if you look at the industry any industry. It doesn't typically go backwards technologically. The controller is innovative, but the Wii is basically a repurposed GameCube. If you built your your console on an innovative controller, you have to ask yourself, is that long-term? I don't know. It seems, um, to be, it seems to be working so far. Yeah, that's. I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised that they would that he would say something as catty as it's a repurposed GameCube. I mean, obviously, we throw the joke around a lot, but when you're getting when you're getting slaughtered in the sales, yeah, but I mean that's their really that is the one that's like their talking point, right? That's the one thing that they really Sony really does have is they have this huge you know right. super powerhouse machine. We is the other way, so it's like if you can take anything away from them. I think that's the place to hit. Yeah, but it is their weak spot. It is their weak spot, but I think when you get to the point where you're being catty like that in public, you know, in the front stream, it really, it's, it's more of an admission of, wow, we're really in trouble here. I think they should try for a new talking point. That talking point, obviously, isn't really getting the job done but, right well, now. What, I mean, what other one is there? I mean, well, it's I like... Think they need to start steering the conversation to that the PS3 and the Wii don't appear in the same conversation, that the Wii right. and the PS2 are in the same conversation, and the 3 is... Something else they need to do, and this is something that we've heard from people in retail, is... Sony needs to stop dicking around and start pushing the PS3 as all the other things that it could do. Imagine mm. if they started positioning it as a really good Blu-ray player, like without 
actually consciously. And wasn't and, that part of the original idea? Right. Imagine 600 bucks, a 20 gig PS3 with a copy of Planet Earth. And I was a copy just going to say, Planet Earth. That like, would sell. If you own, that, that's a killer app as far as I'm concerned for the PS3. You can get it for 70 bucks on Amazon right now. Yeah. It's, uh, it's allocated, so it's back, you know, you might, it might be back ordered or whatever. But as a demo of what Blu ray and HD content is. Unbelievable. So if Sony. What is Planet Earth? It's, it's the BBC documentary all filmed in HD, and it's just this amazing, amazing stuff. It's like 10 or 12 four, episodes. Yeah. It's, it's four discs, great right? nature documentary. Yeah, yeah. But it's you definitely buy it if you have. Get the British version, too, because you have As that. a demonstration of what of the definition that you get and the way that, that the new high-def cameras and stuff allow them to do things. But it would require Sony to get its shit together, stop putting everything in a little compartment, and allowing... Sony Computer Entertainment to position the PS3 as a really good Blu-ray player and start... If they're going to bundle, bundle a fucking... Don't, don't dick around with Talladega Nights or Kung Fu Hustle or whatever the fuck it is. Put something that's really like, oh, my God. It's, yeah, Talladega Nights, n- not even a good movie, so... Yeah, it's tough, though, because at the same time, you don't want it perceived as not a games machine, right? Like, but first right now, and foremost. They need to get... High, like, if they sell it as a Blu-ray player and they get some success with that, and they're selling it as a console, they're going to get more of them into homes. It's, a, it's better than the $1,000 Blu-ray player, and, it, you know, and, it's, and it's cheaper. So you get it in homes, then you've got the box in a house, and you could sell games to them. Yeah. So here's another little surprise for Nintendo. They were boasting recently on their Wi-Fi service connection for N- Nintendo DS now having 5 million users. Wow. So, yeah, I know that does sound really big, right? So the point that Dan Dorma, who wrote the story up for us, made is that actually it's not as huge as you might think, considering that there are 40 million Nintendo DS units out there. Well, but considering what a pain in the ass it is to get online with that thing, I, I do consider that an accomplishment. And also considering how, I mean, Nintendo really does not push online very much. Well, they may not push it online, but they do have the powerhouse titles behind it to get you to go online. Animal Crossing, Mario Kart DS, Metroid Prime Hunters, and Pokemon. Pokemon. Those are all pushing you to actually hop on there. So. Pokemon definitely will be like a real push as far as that. Animal Crossing, uh, you can kind of argue either way. Mario Kart was definitely one, but I think Pokemon well, about will this? be. With Pokemon and the success Pokemon is going to enjoy, that 5 million number definitely going to go up pretty soon, right? Yeah, big time. Ubisoft announced their, uh, their financials with which, you know, that's whatever. That's not so exciting. But what is interesting is they also gave details on a few sales numbers that they had here, which they did very well on uh, the Wii. Ray- Rayman Raving Rabbits, 830,000 units. Red Steel, 950,000 units. Yeah, Nintendo really pushes those numbers, too, because Nintendo's big push right now is like, hey, really, we're not the only ones selling games on our system. No, really. That like, is that is very much true. Yeah, it's like if you add up all third-party games, like they've sold more than any one of our titles. Titles, like, you know, if you add them all up, like that's saying something. Yeah, no, but and, and <laughs> Ubisoft really is the success story that they push. Those two games really have sold like crazy. And and although we might cringe a little bit knowing how we all felt about Red Steel, um, apparently Gimo called it a, a new brand. Yeah. So that's a new brand Steel for them. Confirmed. Yep. So there you go. Look forward to Red Steel 2 coming soon. Um, the other th- interesting tidbits out of here is that the both of the Tom Clancy titles continue to do really well. Rainbow Six Vegas is now at 1.7 million uh, life to date, which is, it's got to be mostly 360 sales, right? Yeah. And then Graw 2, uh, which was only a 360 number, they announced at over a million sales. Great. But even more scary is casual games continue to rule because as great as all that sounds, their pets line, which is dogs, cats, and hamsters, Three and a half million sold. That was a smart Good idea. God, whose yeah. ever idea that was? It's hey, Nintendo dogs with cats and hamsters. So Boom. you know these uh, these band breakups never go easy. And you talked about the Activision call, and the part I pulled out of the Activision call is a little story I saw on Joystick, which uh, was a little uh, first the mud slinging between oh, Guitar yeah. Hero. You, so you saw this, right? This is gonna get ugly. Oh, it's going to get real ugly real yeah, quick. Anyway, it's be great. in the conference call, Activision said of Rock Band, it wasn't surprising to see the Guitar Hero has attracted imitators. Yeah. Uh, wait. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I think last time. I checked. Guitar Hero was a harmonics game engine, and that's who's making Rock Band. Yeah. It's not surprising, especially since the company that makes the game has gone somewhere else. Like, <laughs> yeah, really not surprising, especially since the game wasn't even the innovator in its first place. Man, this is going to be the Guns N' Roses saga. It's like, it's going to be Slash and Axel all over again. It's going to get ugly down to, like, which songs are right? in which, what guitars are in which, like, who has what amps, like, every press release, every announcement is going to be, I'm going like, to take delight and watch it. It's going to be freaking hilarious. 
Yeah. Don't you think? The other thing that's interesting, and, and we've, we've wondered about this because of the cost on them, they also announced in their uh, the numbers of the Guitar Hero 2 song packs sold on the 360 Marketplace, 200 thousand. Yeah, so what did those go for? So much for, for the pop? boycott. <laughs> <laughs> boycott apparently didn't really work out so well. Didn't take hold with the kids. What do what those sell for a piece? It's like 500 points. Uh, 800, 800 points. Was it 500 points? 500 points. So well, that's like right, because it was two bucks six, a song. Six bucks, yeah. yeah. It was six bucks. 200 bucks, two, two bucks a song. So th- I think they said that was like not, it's not really there yet, but that's like a good start according to them, right? I mean, to us, that's, to me, that sounds like a big number, but they were like, hey, you know, it's, it's a well, start. Right. At the same time, though, they were also saying that that gives them <laughs> a competitive advantage because they already have a head start. I mean, it will be interesting to see how well, they also have a head fall. start by a brand that's about to go into that's the big three thing. and yeah. not being a bazillion jo- dollars to join in it is the brand and the commercials the, the the 360 commercial is awesome i mean they're they're building a really hell of a brand there all right so we have to go back to a little more serious note now and uh, get into the whole political world of video gaming again remember a story last week we drew attention to on the new york politicians and their anti-video game uh, legislation they've they've ratcheted it up a big notch um their new bill which is now the, so that bill was a Republican Republican bill, mm-hmm. and now there is one uh, that's being a republic that's being democratically sponsored that that adds more teeth to uh, selling games to minors. This would make it a felony. Wow! To sell video games which contained "quote unquote" depraved violence or indecent images to See? minors. I don't know. I think the other one might get through because it's regulating the SRB. This one, this has that also. Oh yeah, but this but the, what'll take it down is is this starts this gets into First Amendment stuff again. So it'll get right. passed, and then the Supreme Court will kick it back. The other one, though, regulating the ESRB, that'll stick. Well, so this actually has all of those provisions in it as well. And I think the scary part for me is that they're trying to make it into a felony, which is, I mean, felonies have a huge ramifications to your record if you happen to be convicted of one. I mean, among other things, you lose the right to vote for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Right. Imagine losing the right to vote because you sold. A but video game, Grand Theft Auto Four, like right? Fifteen. Right. I mean, we can't. We all know about the deal about the parental responsibility, but it, it really is quite amazing. The other thing they did, John, is that this includes a, a little trick that legislation uses called a severability clause, mm-hmm. which allows the which allows the legislation should it be passed to stand against challenges on individual sections without jeopardizing the entire piece of legislation. Right. I think the felony part won't get through. The, the ESRB is going to end up with some regulation over it. Because There's obviously a lot of pressure on that front. Yeah, but I think anything that gets into First Amendment territories, you know, it might take a while, but it'll get beaten back. You're a parent. I mean, you're the best person to give an opinion on this. What do you want to see? Just need there just needs to be more disclosure and information on stuff. There needs to be, you know, it's all about information. As a parent, you have a responsibility. You need to be able to go find out what you need to know about a game and make sure that you're controlling what comes into your house. I mean, it's. Not rocket science. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you you, you uh, grew up in the UK, and obviously things to go a little bit differently there as far as the government is concerned. The uh, boss of Free Radical, uh, David Doak, and, and this I, I guess it's Doak. Doak. I think so. Okay, David Doak. Apologize for the mispronunciation. Um, is of the opinion that the UK government should be doing more to subsidize video game studios inside the UK. Now, this is kind of maybe a foreign notion to us in the United States where we don't have uh, quite such a direct relationship between the subsidization. I mean, usually it's like hidden in tax breaks and that kind of stuff here. Right, it's because they're so close to France. But France does that uh, shit. The party in power in the UK that's been in power for a very long time now has its roots as a socialist party. So there's there's a lot of, you know, supporting things for the good of everybody residual there's not a lot of it left but there's it's there so it's interesting because he he here's his take he says the uk government needs to do something more useful than just criticizing violent content in video games he says they love the british film industry and stuff they're prepared to give it money yet they'll stand around watching video game developers losing staff yeah and it's a bigger it's it's very important because as we as you just mentioned france is moving forward with plans to really heavily subsidize their video game business so this is going to be a big shootout in europe well, it's talent it encourages education it's they don't want to see a talent purge there's like so many industries that could bring money into the uk video games is video i mean the uk teams have a long standing reputation of being very high quality all the way back to the bullfrog days the uk studios have always been you know really up there and if they start losing talent to you know, other countries in Europe, or particularly the U.S., a lot of U.K. developers come over here 
um, and a lot of them go to Japan as well. And then it's like it's taking ultimately money out of the country. And that's actually exactly the point that Roger Bennett, who's the director general general of the ELSPA, made, which is that it's time now for the government to recognize the valuable contribution we make to the UK economy. Yep. So. Now that we're past that part, we can wrap up here on the fun stuff, which is Halo 3 and, and yes. big stuff. Yes. All kinds of info in that beta. Yeah. So tell me about it. I've got it all listed here. What's the coolest stuff that we dug out and found with the custom game matches? So, yeah, there's a convoluted way to get into custom game matches, but if you can do it, um, obviously the Wraith, the big Covenant tank, has like a second turret now. A second guy can get in and be Gunner. Uh, the sword is in there. The pistol's in there. None of this stuff is like who knows what it's going to be like in the final game, but it's just fun to mess around with. There's a ton of different weird modes, um, all kinds kinds of stuff none of which or all of which could end up in the final game but they're really they're, they're kind of fun to mess around with you can do things with speed and gravity but uh we have kind of discovered like you pretty quickly end up going back to the uh to the matchmaking uh play types because those are the ones that they meant to put out and those are the ones that are balanced the other stuff is kind of cool to look and see and it's cool to be able to just play with your friends if you want to in a party of any size in the custom games but um yeah other than that just kind of a cool thing to be able to check out John, we talked about uh, Gears of War and as far as graphics, but we don't usually talk about Gears of War in reference to its narrative, do we? Awesome. <laughs> Shouldn't I? Well, Marcus Phoenix? Guess what? We're getting a book, apparently. Oh, uh, <laughs> VH1 uh, Game Break dug up on a, on a bookseller site. They uh, released that Stephen Kent is going to be penning a book that doesn't have a title yet, but it's called Gears of, Year, Gears of War 1, which, uh, let us believe, it'll also be a series. Just, uh, looks like it should be out in August of 07. I can hardly wait. Well, Stephen Kent, though, that's a that's, great author. Yeah, I mean, well, I haven't read any of his fiction, but I mean, he's a he's a longtime video game journalist, and uh, he's actually even been up for a Philip K. Dick Award as far as his wow, sci-fi writing. So, so nice. he, he is respected in the sci-fi world. But I, it is pretty funny. You got to admit, it's funny material, right, yeah. Marcus? Oh, let's get him, guys. Well, yeah, I mean, just because the game kind of is like a testosterone action movie. I mean, you could do stuff with the with the fiction, I guess. We'll yeah. see. And the biggest mainstream announcement of the week, possibly, is that CBS Sports is going to be broadcasting the World Series of Video Games. Yeah. One thing that I thought was very telling is at no point do they say at what time of the day. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. Yeah. I was, I've been looking through it. It really doesn't say that, although... 2 a.m. in the morning. Right. It's going to be up against that uh, later with Carson Daly or whatever. I think, I think actually it'll be mid-afternoon because they're, it's going to be part of the CBS Sports Spectacular on Sundays, which I think is something akin to like the old ABC Wild World of Sports. Yeah. Right? So you're going to be able to watch Real Live Geeks playing Quake 4, Guitar Hero 2, Fight Night Round 3. In the middle of the afternoon. And World of Warcraft Burning Crusade. It'll be on against golf. It'll no. be interesting if they <laughs> handle it. Because like, I don't know if anybody has really figured out how to broadcast competitive uh, video games. Like, Because when you watch them, I don't know if you guys have ever seen them do Magic the Gathering on ESPN2. It's awesome. Like, And that is at like 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, but my friend used to call me in college when they were doing it because it was the most you know, hilarious thing. You have the same thing. You have the color guy and the info guy, and he's like, Oh my God! I think he's going to play the red. Dra he did. He did play the red dragon. Oh my God! You know and these well, that's guys. That's the key. It can't. It needs to be one of the guys. Needs to be have intimate, intimate knowledge of the game. Well, you know, I think it also needs to not necessarily be set up like a like a regular sports cast. I mean, I don't know what the magic formula is, well, but the Warcraft. I know. That, see, that's kind of interesting. He's walking, he's walking. He's walking through the woods. He's walking across the plains. He's still walking. We think he should probably have a mount, but he doesn't have one yet because he's not the right level. He's still walking. Uh, we're going to cut to a commercial break. Maybe he'll be there by the time we get back. <laughs> it's going to be hosted, apparently, by uh, Greg Amsinger, who anchored the uh, WSVG finals last year, and he's going to be doing all the play-by-play. -play. So if you want to check out more information on it, you can get that at... <laughs> at he totally shot him there. <laughs> <laughs> Quake 4 Guitar Hero 2 and Fight Night could be kind of cool. I really... Burning Crusade is going to be bizarre. Guitar Hero, I'm really interested to see how that that's uh, done competitively. It doesn't, really, like, doesn't really lend itself to commentary either, does well, it? I, I just hope part... Oh, he nailed that riff. Yeah, I hope part of it is like showmanship. 
worship or, oh, yeah. or like yeah. your outfit and you know your hair guitar. What it needs technique. to be like is that movie that came out a couple of weeks ago, Air Guitar. Air guitar. It needs to be done oh like that. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So if you want more information, you can get it at the WSVG.com. That's their official site. The four events that they're gonna be covering are June twenty first in Louisville, Kentucky, July fifth in Dallas, Texas, October eighteenth in Los Angeles, and November twenty ninth in Sweden. And I'm not even gonna try and pronounce the name of the city in Sweden. So <laughs> check your local listings. Check your local listings. It'll be on Sundays on CBS. For us, your local listings are easy. It's boards.oneup.com. Come by the games channel, board, whatever you want to call it. Post there. We're posting there. We'll get all your stuff and respond. I'll have a thread up earlier next week, I promise. Stick around. You won't want to miss it. Until next week, we're Ghost. <laughs>